please welcome... Hell. 
Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to the show. How are you? It's a special edition. It's a special report. It's a special time in the world. It's We're all feeling quite special, I can tell you. Welcome, everybody. And uh, the reason I decided to do this today is because yesterday I had too much stuff going on. And and quite frankly, um, just there's an issue with any of the... I'm doing the Trump uh, CPAC speech. Because I, I had thought... <laughs> I had been under. I'm under. I was uh, under the uh, misapprehension that it would somehow be shorter than his rally speech, and it's almost exactly the same amount of time. Thank you, I, Aaron. I feel special. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, and uh, I, that's why I'm here to make you guys feel special. And uh, I was. I. I guess I don't know why I thought that. I just because I'm a lunatic. But um, the. It you know it's going to be greatest hits. I reserve the right to bow out, but I also um, when I do these live, Rumble puts them up or like RSBN or whoever the network is that puts these things up does them, and then it um, like they have to on YouTube they have to pull them down immediately, and on Rumble the technology is such that after a live stream it becomes a whole new file, so you can't just keep watching what you did or keep working till the end. Till you're done watching the stream, it resets whenever they hit the off button. And so, in past, there's been a couple of moments where um, we uh, we've had on YouTube where they've literally been removed while the thing was going on for violating <laughs> terms of service. Then there's been moments where they run the whole thing, but then they immediately pull it down uh, because they know they can't post it, but they got away with the live. And then on Rumble, it's they they air the thing, and then they make it another thing if you want to watch it later. And in the middle of all the the stuff, it's just a, like, we, it, you know, breaking all this stuff down, especially when he gets on a gish gallop, it gets really difficult to, you know, I'll never f- finish any of them. Now, he, in a lot of these, he's burning time by um, just bringing up people who are in the crowd and then saying, what a wonderful blah, blah, blah. And and getting rounds of applause by recognizing other Republicans, and and then attacking other Republicans. So I do have some popcorn, um, just in case that happens. I pretty sure can count on it. Yes, I am wearing this shirt because it's been a hell of a week for for Biden and Harris, and also uh, just to mess with people. I, I control back. I'm allowed, right? So yes, it's a Sunday Spark Show, Shell Bell. Um, <laughs> so. <clears throat> Shall we get started uh, before, you know, I go any further? Uh, here we are. By the way, like and subscribe. Uh, give a thumbs up. If you're on Twitch, uh, keep our subscriptions high by going for it. Um, it's a great way to help out the show or become a Patreon supporter. Or there's the the uh, way over there in the corner is a little Venmo. And you can you know, buy me a coffee if you like today's show. Here we go. Let's get started. And it's going to start with Lee Greenwood, isn't it? Welcome, the 45th President of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. Right. And they blow off the first li- verse altogether. So I have to turn the audio off. Hold on one second. Um, let me see. Let me let me find something I can play over this that makes more sense. Um, um, let's see. I'll try this. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> that won't be, that's not good enough. Hold on. This... <laughs> there you go. Does that work? Thank you. Hey, thank you. real audio from the from the with the music removed <laughs> I here's the other thing too um here you go hold on I don't know why it's not going better for him um all jokes aside Check out this asshole just standing there during the song perfectly still while it's playing. Listen to this. He's just standing there while the song plays. 
like back from the mic, waiting for this. I don't know where that guy's going. What the fuck? <laughs> this guy walks by in the background. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Maybe this. Maybe there's a mistake here. Hold on one second. Can I? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I can do this. Hold on. Let me go back to this regular screen here for a second, if I may. And then uh, I got to move this up because of how it works. And then let's see um, if I can open this up and edit that and take this guy, turn it on and have this be blue, close, and then that's, that's pretty crazy. Apparently, that's just too much of one. Hold on. Um, hold on. Boo! Yay! He's wonderful! Hold on. Um, I have to set this... I have to bring this down a little bit, uh, apparently. There we go. That should be a little better, I think. There we go. <laughs> should we just put this in the whole time? There we go. Hi, stupid. Don't even... <laughs> Hold on. I did like... This will be good. Okay, here we go. Wow. Thank you. I did a weird... Well, thank you very much, and I'm thrilled to be... Yeah, a weird choice, CPAC, for a background for him. But, I mean, I get it. ...be back in the great state of Texas. And in I'm, the great state of Texas. I'm thrilled to be back at CPAC. CPAC, Matt. CPAC, Matt. Look where we are, okay, you know. The proud patriots here today are the... By the way, this asshole I never seems to read the crowd audience... He just waits till the song ends and then starts into the teleprompter. It this idea that he somehow masterfully media, you know, in control of media and he can rile up a crowd or something at, without, you know, quite frankly, just putting his thumb on a wound they have and watching them squeal, which is really what he's doing. Beating heart of the conservative movement. That's true. That's so true. The beating heart. The beating heart, as opposed to. Other hearts. It all started for me at CPAC, by the way. I don't know if anyone was there a long time ago, but they are incredible, and the job that's been done is un it's unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, you are, nobody would believe are it. the loyal defenders of our heritage, our liberty, our culture, liberty. our constitution, and our God-given... Yes, our constitution is very important. The, the extra T is not necessary. Rights. You never... Stop fighting for America, and I will never, ever... Stop attacking it. Stop fighting for you. Won't happen. Thank you. Won't happen. I'm never going to stop fighting for you. Well, I'll take slight breaks for golf and fleecing my supporters, but in general... But let's... By the way, uh, always beware of politicians or pundits who use the word fight too much. I even find myself accidentally doing it because it's part of the conversation. And it annoys the shit out of me when I catch myself. But anybody's like, I fight for you. You've got to fight for us. We need people who will fight. Fuck you. We have a democracy. We don't solve things by fighting. We come to a consensus, dumb fuck. Let's begin this evening by showing our appreciation to... For Jeffrey Epstein and one of my old friends. Who are two wonderful hosts, two incredible people. Incredible. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Patriots. A family of young ladies that are even more beautiful than they are, I have to say it. I don't know what the fuck that was. Did anybody catch that? What the fuck? Anybody? Fighting for you won't uh -huh. happen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna, uh, well, let's begin oh, this evening by start. showing our appreciation to our two wonderful hosts, two incredible people, unbelievable patriots, a family of young ladies that are even more beautiful than they are, I have to say it. With a fam, with, the word with, with would make sense. Ah, fuck it. They are beautiful. Matt and his wife. 
We just took pictures and it's- Ew! 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 Great to see Matt and Mercedes Schlapp. We just took pictures with their daughters and they were some hot tamales, let me tell you. I was so, I almost went 100% uh, Access Hollywood tape on them. Boring. Great job, great job. Really incredible, thank you. Super good, super good. And the check cleared, so I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Mercedes. And let's also show our appreciation to everyone at the American Conservative Union. Let's hear it for all the comedians you've heard tonight. Union who helps to put this event on. It's an incredible event, including all of the hardworking activists who dedicate their lives to preserving a thing called American freedom. There's you may have heard of it. I don't really believe in it, but Incredible. it sounds great. People, thank you, everybody. Thanks for the freedom, everybody. P.S. Free gold We're coin. Also great. Don't forget, there's an ad. We're running that right now. Grateful to be joined by representatives Ronnie Jackson, my doctor. Dr. Ronnie, where's Ronnie? God, he's, uh, we're so glad he's here. Is he here? It says you're here. Is he here? Where's Ronnie? Oh. He's uh, passing out Ambien in the back. He was the White House doctor. He was a great doctor, you know. He was an admiral, a doctor, and now he's a congressman. We I call him Dr. Admiral. Which is the best, if you had your choice? Let's poll everyone. I'm good at guessing. Tell everybody what you think, and then I'll ask if that's true. Some people think that's true. And he sort of indicated doctor because he loved looking at my body. It was so strong and powerful. <laughs> but he said, I'm the healthiest president that's ever lived. He's not kidding. He got a huge response on that because everybody thought he was being self-effacing and hilarious. He wasn't. I was the healthiest. I, I said, I like this guy. I don't know who the hell he is at the time. I said, but I... But he's got the, he cuts his, he trims his nails, and that's what I like most. And he said, Thanks, I'm going to run for Congress, and there were like 48 thank people. You, and thank you, Lola Lean, and thank you uh, for the super chat, you guys. Thank you, Candy. Running, I said, Ronnie, you've never done this before. <laughs> Neither did you. You know, he's a great student at Annapolis, a great everything. Everything he's, he did was great, but he said. Everything he did was great. He, he, it, it, I can, and I can speak from personal experience that his third knuckle is the best knuckle. I'm going to run. I said, well, let's get you into the runoff. You needed two, two out of 44. And he made it. And then I said, you know, now we're getting close, Ronnie, and let's get you by the rhino. And we got him by that rhino. And here he is. And he's great. We love you, Ronnie. Great job. Thank you. Another Moon River. Whew. Thank you, Doc. You ever served time? One is a warrior and he's a friend of mine. And he's a warrior. And here he is. And he's great. The word is warrior, I think. We love you, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Great job. Thank you. Another one who's a warrior and he's a friend of his warrior art. His warrior art. Mine, incredible man, Ralph Norman. Ralph. Congressman. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Ralph taught me a lesson. He was in a race and it was so one sided that everybody said, We don't have to vote for Ralph. We don't have to vote. He's going to win by a landslide. So maybe we'll just go out to dinner and then we'll go back and watch the results. And so many people didn't vote, but he won. He squeaked. And that was the last time that'll ever happen to Ralph. Right, Ralph? Jesus Christ. That was Low turnout wins are the best win, but that was scary. A lesson for us all, but he won. He always wins. <laughs> and Beth Van Dyne, right here in Texas. Right here. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. A man who's really courageous. Jesus Christ, Get, he's doing this at the beginning. I love her, that was a long time ago. Oh. She takes out her gun, starts spinning it around. <laughs> but he may not leave the same way. This is her commercial. I said, I don't know who that is, but I love her. That was a long time ago, right? I love you, Mr. President. And I can say the same thing for Marjorie Taylor Greene, a real oh. champion. You know, they're both women, and I put them together because, you know, categorically. She can right on my chin. She's allowed. So popular. So, so popular. popular. Every the time popular. we go someplace, they start screaming for you, Marjorie. You know that. <laughs> at, at. The word is at. Amazing. Really amazing. Thank you. They start screaming wonderful things like, 
Were you the bomber? Are those your shoes? Why do you walk weird? It matches exactly the video. You're gonna break your elbows if you keep doing the clean and jerk like that. It's terrible form. Stuff like that. Very much. And you're sitting next to Matt. What a combination those two are. Well. Yeah. Well, you know, there there have been some great teams in the in the past. <laughs> they are something. Something. Oh, that's true. They're, they love our country. Congressional candidates. Now, look at this guy. He looks like better than Cary Grant. Do you remember Cary Grant? Today, we don't have Cary Grant. So today, we have Rosie O'Donnell. And we have... What happened to Cary Grant and Clark Gable? And they, uh, they died. They, got, they were really old. Yes, and that's the thing about modern male uh, film stars is that they're, they're just not attractive anymore. What? Errol Flynn. But we have a guy that looks just as good as them. And he's running and he's going to win. Bo Hines. Bo, where's Bo? Where is this guy? Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo. Great football player, too. Great student and a great football player. And Kevin Kiley. Kevin, where's Kevin? Oh, God, get fucking on with it. Took this country by storm, not just the state, but took the country by storm. Tudor Dixon, governor of Michigan, soon to be, we hope, straighten the state out. Tudor is fantastic. Oh my God, these are the- The shutdown queen, but everybody- is like He's just going through these people. And a person who you just saw, one of the hottest politicians in this world, I think, at this moment, and I think it's going to be that way for a long time. She's incredible. I met her, and almost immediately I said, this one is inc almost incredible. I'll never forget, I was in Arizona, and a lot of people there, and I was introducing <laughs> some of the folks, and everybody was bored stiff. I <laughs> well, it is. it was one of your speeches. This place is dying. And I'm introducing gubernatorial candidates. And it was like, I said, I got to get through this. This is very bad. There were a lot of candidates. And then I introduced this woman named Carrie Lake, and the place went crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, she's crazy. Makes sense. Right? The place went crazy. Um, uh, steal again. That's not my, uh, do it. Yes, that is my doing. Of course it is. She's an incredible woman. She'll be an absolutely incredible absolutely. governor. And she'll be so looking at everything. They need much. a good governor out there. So they have a good. rhino who didn't do the job. They didn't do the job. I'm supposed to say that. That's They're not politically correct. But I, I'll say it anyway. You don't mind. Again, so, the... Carrie, good luck out there, and uh, we'll be out there. We'll do a couple of rallies. We'll get 45, 50,000 people. Remember when I get 50,000 and Biden couldn't fill up the eight circles, and they said he won. He won. Couldn't fill up eight circles, and he won. He chose not to, dummy. It was a pandemic, fucko. I don't think Carrie feels that way. I don't think a lot of people do. That state has such spirit. It's incredible. So, congratulations. Yeah, good luck. That's an unbelievable win. Thank you. Good. Yeah, it's a friend of mine it's, and somebody. It's unbelievable. She she came in first in a three way race that was split three ways. He was truly one of the best. He was so brave. He was so courageous. So brave. Uh, so courageous. Ambassador Rick Grinnell. So brave. Why? Why was he brave? Hold on. He was great. Another one who's great. Dragon X flyer, don't say stuff like that. He knows no, what's happening. Don't, Dragon, don't say stuff like that in my chat. I, I don't care. Don't. Nope. Zero tolerance. No. Okay. Thank you. Happening. And uh, he's really been a friend to this administration, to my administration. <laughs> to any administration. The other side. To so, all administrations. So him and a lot of times he and Rick worked together. That was a duo. When I had a big problem, I'd send the both of them. Because the other countries didn't have a chance. Up here, they didn't have a chance. And even with toughness, they didn't have a chance. 
Okay. Yeah, they could be s smart or tough, but never two at the same time. Shh. Patel. Yeah. Oh yeah, both of them are in deep shit. I mean, Jan 6 committee, I'm just saying, just hand out the subpoenas as they come out the door. Great job, Cash. Thank you, and thank you, Rick. Fabulous. Hiding Chairman those of texts. the Japanese Conservative Union, Jay Aiba, and also Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Really? They're both heads of, they're co-heads of the Japanese conservative movement? So I eye, lost a great a lot of eye drift today. Friend and as you know, the prime minister, what a great gentleman he was. What a great man he was. We had a. Oh, he's Shinzo Abe and because he brought up the Japanese conservative uh, community guy or whatever his job is. And so therefore. An incredible relationship that was. Incredible. Nobody really liked him. Nobody. And the job he did for Japan. So Was, I mean, they're kind of in deep shit. But, so, uh, right. He's right now in greener fairways. You know, he loved golf. And he could play golf too. He was good. And we this is so moving. I, I don't know. Had a lot of fun together, but we made a lot of great deals for the United States and for Japan. The relationship was incredible. <laughs> and he is a man who will be greatly missed. So greatly good. missed. I want to uh, Wait, thank well, you I'm sorry. for your. I'm sorry. What was his name? Okay. For the record, uh, Trump brain farted the name of Shinzo Abe. Just saying. Who's greatly missed? Exactly. There was a, he was, uh, the guy who ran the jet, the Japan guy who did the thing where he was, uh, he did great. We did great deals. What was his name? The guy who just got murdered and fucking hell. Your incredible support also, because I just walked in the door and they told me I had this straw poll. Oh, right. He won the straw poll. Like, he refused to show up unless they rigged the straw poll for him. The Japan guy who died. Exactly, Mark. What the fuck? Who thought? I didn't know I could win. Is it... No, I, I just come in. Sir, you won the straw poll. I said, I better damn win that straw poll. But... No, and uh, done by McLaughlin. You know the McLaughlin? McLaughlin. <laughs> Glenn brothers are fantastic pollsters, so it's a yes. They uh, oddly enough, all their polls, whether they're true or not, tend to go your way. It's an honor, and uh, I guess we had sixty-nine percent and uh, ninety-nine percent approval. Why couldn't I get a hundred? Why ninety-nine? Wow! When was the last wow. time somebody had a ninety-nine percent approval? That's pretty good. Thank you, Jim Jones. I think maybe uh, uh, David Koresh. Everybody, you're the people that voted. Wow. Everybody's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I didn't vote. I voted against him. How many fucking did you? Would you? And second place. You need, and by the way, you, you needed to approve to get in. This was 20. And the only people who didn't have to push the I approve of Donald Trump to get into CPAC button were uh, members of the press. 4% and then you had them down in one and most of them didn't get anything. And not that I want that to happen, of course, but it's okay if it does. And a very special thanks, and I do really appreciate that, Matt, because it's a very, you know, it's very respected, that straw poll. It yeah. Comes out and it's a good straw poll. As straw polls go, it's the best straw poll you've ever had. It's like finding a needle in a straw poll. Heavily covered. and uh, It's heavily covered. A lot of people see that. So much better than the other polls where I'm doing very poorly. A lot of people talk about the CPAC straw poll, and that's one you want to uh, win. Really something. It's, it's a, really good. It's good. Uh, it's really where the heart of conservative people in this country is. That straw poll is a tremendous... Yeah, that's, if I win the straw poll, it's my straw poll. It's an indicator of it's what, a straw poll. <laughs> what's happening in our country. Mm. And a very special thanks for the amazing support from so many conservative Hispanic Americans. And <laughs> just hit, hit Hispanic. The Americano straw media straw poll. I'm the, the Americano country and a very special thanks for the amazing support from so many conservative hispanic americans and the americano 
media straw poll. I got 81 percent. Is that nice? 81. With a second place finisher, I don't even know who it is. Second place finisher was at 16 percent. That's pretty good. So I want to thank you very much. The Hispanic people are incredible. I agree. I agree. They're good. And they have really embraced. I mean, they're murderers, they're rapists, and I assume some of them are good people. The ones that have managed to sneak in here and stay, fantastic. I love you, and I can't wait to, wait to send you back to your country. The Republican Party. I say actually they've embraced me, not really the Republicans, but, but I won't say that because I don't want to get myself in trouble with Matt. He did. But uh, they really are. They're incredible people there. They are. I, I think we can all agree. Look at that. We're all agreeing. Hispanic people are great people. They're, uh, hard Especially when they vote for me, they're hardworking. It was hard work for them to vote for me 86% in the CPAC Americano straw poll. Sorry, Americano straw poll. Unbelievable. But I've been watching CPAC for years. and Yeah. Uh, and uh, with the Cheeto dust on my chest and a phone in my hand. As you know, it used to be very divided. You had Ron Paul, and great guy, Ron Paul, a little different, very much like his son, Rand, who I also like a lot. But Ron's a little different, a little difficult, like Rand. Rand can be difficult, but you know, when they're your friend, they're your friend. But you had the Ron Paul people, you had the Bush people, and of course you had the rhinos. And... So the Bush people weren't the rhinos? Huh? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm shocked to hear that. But now there's a great feeling of unity. You know, when you- in there? Yes, it's a great feeling. After we purged everyone who won't uh, literally cradle my balls in their soft palate. You see poll numbers like that, 99% approval. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like Saddam Hussein numbers. Well, there was no such thing. There was no such thing. And when you see those- Yes, there was no diverse. Back then they had this awful thing called diversity of thought. There was some depth to the political discourse in the conservative world where they could disagree on some things. We've gotten rid of all that, and we've gone with the Kim Jong-un methodology. Feeling of unity, not only CPAC, but I think, Matt, in the Republican Party, I think we have to do what we have to do to bring our nation back, right? Yes, and what you have to do apparently is purge any Republican who mildly disagrees with you. So as we gather tonight, our country is being destroyed more from the inside than out. America Wait a minute. Uh, didn't you guys shit on Biden for saying that uh, the domestic terrorist threat is the biggest uh, terrorist threat we face in the world right now? No? Apparently. America is on the edge of an abyss, and our movement is the only force on Earth that can save it. This movement right here. It's a movement. It's such a movement. It's a, it's the kind of movement that you could only hope for. What we do in the next few months and the next few years will determine whether American civilization will collapse or fail. Collapse or fail. I mean, these are your choices. Or whether it will triumph and thrive, frankly, like never before. <laughs> It'll thrive, but not just thrive, like extra thrive, like uncomfortable thriving. This is no time for complacency. We cannot be complacent. Define complacency. Please do it right before it. What complacency means, and a lot of people didn't know this. We have to seize this opportunity to deal with the radical left, Don't we? socialist lunatics and fascists. <laughs> and we have to hit them very, very hard. Has uh, we have to hit them very, very hard with a not with one of those whack-a-mole mallets. It has to be a crippling defeat because our country cannot take it. You remember when I was campaigning, and again, we did much better in the second election than we did in the first. By no, no, you did. Well, America did a lot better. <laughs> Many millions of votes, much, much better, but... That's, by the way, see how the... The clapping behind him is, is like, yeah, you totally won, bro. I used to say, not thinking this could even be very possible, but it always had a chance it will be Venezuela large scale or Venezuela on steroids. That's what's happening to our country. Yeah, it's totally where we are. I mean, basically, did you see the jobs report this week? 
I mean, that's that was the sign that Venezuela knew they were in deep shit. It's not even thinkable. Yes, it's well, I mean, you can think it, but you have to have a good imagination. We have to take this chance to shatter the corrupt Washington establishment once and for all. We have to run aggressive, unrelenting and boldly populist campaigns. Populist, we want. Yeah, we want to be populist, which is basically popular, but with an is. We want to be populist. We want to love our country. That's what we want. <laughs> I, uh, for the record, I love my country. I, I'm a big fan of America. I'm glad to be an American. I'm, uh, to quote Lee Greenwood, proud to be an American. That's, this might shock you, uh, Mr. Former friend of Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, there's still, I mean, it's, I'm sure that's a friendship that never really goes away. And we have to throw off the shackles of globalism and reassert two very important words. You know what the words are? America first. It's a very simple thing. So simple. And yet, it's all complicated because of the Nazis that used it in the mid-30s. We have to put our country first. We had that done and we were doing great. And then I believed what she told me. If we do this, then not only will we fire Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, crazy Nancy Pelosi. What was she doing in Taiwan? Oh, yeah. Let's see. What was she doing in Taiwan? Why? Why would you do that? You know the Chinese are better than us. Why would you do? Why would you go there? Why are you playing with fall? Why? I mean, if she went to North Korea, that'd be one thing. Everything she touches turns to bad. Turns to bad. I don't want to say it. Because I don't want them to say he used foul language, you know? I don't want to say, but it does. It turns bad. Two, I got impeached twice. She failed twice. The woman brings chaos. <laughs> Everywhere, yes. It's totally chaos. And that's exactly what's happening. What's happened in China right mm. now. What's happening in China and Taiwan with what's going on. Yeah, what's going on? Explain it to everybody because they might not be up on it. I want to hear your details. I love when he really gets into the... I mean, I'm wonky like that. I like to hear the fine details. She played right into their hands. Did she? Because now they have an excuse to do whatever they're doing. And I will tell you, it would have never, ever happened in a... Yes, we know. A million years under Trump. I can tell you that. Well, yeah. You would have struck a deal to give them Taiwan. <laughs> this whatever is happening... Never would have, never, they wouldn't have, if they, <clears throat> at one point. We played right into their hands, but we did. We will save our nation. Yeah. It, China, China's got us right where they want us. And in just under two years time, we will save the, our country from imminent danger. Did he just refer to himself in the third person? He always does. And American he does that a lot. Power. Prosperity and prestige will come back, and it'll come back strongly. Victory cannot come a moment too soon. Yes, it's, you know, it might be too late already. It kind of is. And yet, no one even thought about it. It's unthinkable. You could take the five worst presidents in American history. We've heard this one before. And put them together, and they would not have done that. They would form a giant Thundercats mech. Thanks, Brian. Damage. Joe Biden. Is Thank you, Heather. Done to our country in less than two years. <laughs> yes, the five were Hoover uh, times five with on steroids. Couldn't have. Holy shit. We just created 528,000 jobs in July. Look at this. An infrastructure bill passed. We're not in Afghanistan anymore. This is a fucking disaster. NATO is getting rebuilt. Two new countries have been added to it. Ukraine's actually winning against Russia. I, Deutsche Bank can't give out loans anymore. This is a fucking catastrophe. The contrast between the Trump administration's amazing success and the Biden administration's... Um, it, define success. You mean it, it... It overseeing the worst response to a pandemic in history? Breathtaking failure could... Breathtaking. It's, <gasps> it's shocking. Not be more stark... <laughs> It says stark. Let's look at the facts. 
Let's do it. I got gasoline. Gasoline for cars. Put it <laughs> in the tank. Thank you. Oh, okay. Just in case you were... He didn't say Vaseline. Thank you very much. Thank you. Put it in the tank. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is... Stark. <laughs> Let's look at the facts. I got gasoline. Gasoline for cars. Put it in the tank. Thank you very much. <laughs> This is a grown man. Seriously, if uh, fuck you, if Biden said um, we're bringing down gas prices, gasoline for cars, put it in the tank. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fox News all fucking week would be like, oh, my God, 25th Amendment. <laughs> One dollar and 87 cents. Yes, because no one was driving. A gallon. I got it down to. They have it now at $5, $6, $7. A friend of mine from California called me this morning. He just paid $8.55, he told me, California. And you'll follow. You'll follow. Yeah, it's getting worse. Uh, I mean, even as it gets better, it's getting worse. It's not even believable. That's true. At this point, it is not even believable. With the help of our great Texas oil and gas workers, we achieved American energy independence and we were even energy dominant and we were going to be double the size of Russia and Saudi Arabia combined. Also, fucking nonsense. Venezuela has the biggest oil reserves in the world and Russia will sell to fucking anybody and they don't care about the land they decimate. So no matter how much we would even have, we're not going to pull it out willy-nilly and fuck up our, our aquifers the way they do. We were going to be energy dominant. Now the United States is becoming a beggar for energy. We're begging. No. No, we're not. Not from anywhere. We gave you the largest tax cuts and regulation cuts in American history. That's a, that's a lie. That's just not true. That's why we had the job numbers. And don't forget, you have not good job numbers right now. No. They're not counting all of the millions of people that aren't working. Who don't have to because wages have gone up. If you looked at the real numbers, that 3.5 would be double that. Maybe some people say triple that. The radical Democrats. Some people, some people say triple that. And by some people, I mean this weird little voice in the back of my head that's always there that says, they don't believe you. Make the number bigger so that they feel like an asshole for even challenging you on the smaller number that's also bullshit. Do it quick. They're losing it. They're walking away. That, those people, that people. Now intend to impose the biggest tax hike. Think of this. The biggest tax hike in bad times <laughs> in American history. This it's bad times. Look at how many people are working. It's terrible. This will be what they're doing right now. Hold on one second, if I may, real quick. Um, let's put this over here. Um, terrible. Things are awful. So bad. It's so bad. It's just stock market is below where it was. Uh, never. Oh, here we go. Almost. It was. Look at this. That was. Well, that was still under Biden. That's no good. Let's see. Terrible, terrible. And yet, look how awful because of COVID. And yet, oh. Gee whiz, look at that. Holy shit. <laughs> well, it's terrible. These are terrible times. These are so terrible. The terribleness. Um, oil, I don't know if you've seen oil prices. They are the highest ever horrible. And it's terrible. And it's going to get worse. And oh shit. And no, uh, oil prices are just awful crude oil is the worst it has ever oh shit uh ever been <laughs> the biggest tax hike in the history of our country the exact opposite of we dug a hole and they filled it back in to where it's ground level again which is the biggest tax hike 
in the, in the history because of that. Right. What I did, and they're working feverishly to pile on more regulations at levels never seen before. Oh, yeah. Name one. Bring, just cite, do like three. Just whip out like three of them. I asked a lot of the big companies, a lot of the biggest and best businessmen, what's more important, the big tax cuts that I got for the country to get it going? And we never had a country going like we had before the China virus came in. We never had anything like it. And then we did it again. We did it again. We did it twice. The stock market was actually higher. It was actually higher than it was pre COVID, as they say, COVID, such a as they say, COVID. Yeah, it, because everybody bought the bottom. Nice name. Because they knew it was artificial and it was based on lockdown. Everybody was like, holy shit. These are fire sale prices on functioning company stocks. And we're uh, this isn't going to be permanent. This isn't like credit default swaps or some other financial issue. This is strictly, and, and people were actually getting the, um, the, the UI that Democrats fought for. And some of that was being used to buy meme stocks. There we go. I wonder where they got it. I don't know. Who can say? Mitch McConnell got taken for a ride by Joe Manchin and the group. And the great people of West Virginia have been seriously hurt by these political antics. I love West Virginia. I fought for it. I won by 45 points. 45. What was that? Why is that number significant? Oh, yeah, that's right. I was 45th president, and I will never have another one of those numbers that matches my IQ. Joe Manchin has totally sold West Virginia out. What he's done to West Virginia, I don't believe, has ever been done to West. What do I know about West Virginia shit? Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County down by the Green River where the paradise lay? I'm sorry, my son, Lord, you're too late in asking. Mr. Peabody's coal train has hauled it away. Good old West Virginia song. I don't believe they're going to stand for it. Let's. No, they're not. We'll see. But it, but it, it's already happening. So. See what happens. We will see what happens. I don't know. Maybe they will. And I said this was going to happen. Joe Manchin is devastating West Virginia. Kirsten Cinema agreed to allow this massive tax increase just yesterday. No, I don't know how to do it. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it. To go forward only provided that Wall Streeters are allowed to keep their current carried interest provision. It's a hell of a provision. Yeah, it's a provision. As provisions go, explain the carried interest provision, you fuck. He benefits from it. This is this helps him. Fuck off. In fact, I had it ended and then I ended up getting so much more for it. I would have terminated it. We were all set to terminate. What does that mean? The fuck does that mean? What does that mean? But we got many, many other things for it. They gave up everything to keep it. It's a ripoff. <laughs> yeah, that's he was going to get rid of it. But, you know, a lot of other people wanted to keep it for the keep it, keep it, keep it. What happened to Mansion and Cinema? What happened? What happened? What happened? We're trying to figure out what the hell happened. What happened? What the hell happened? And what happened? Who knows? Where did this new philosophy come from? Or Where did it come from? All of a sudden. All of a sudden. 48 hours. I think if this deal passes, they will both lose their next election. I think so. But we want them to, so I don't know how to feel about it. I, I do believe that. Was this weird soft applause? West Virginia and Arizona. 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 Stand for what they did to them. Mm -mm. And that includes the races that are being run right now. They're not going to take it. And I told the old broken crow, Mitch McConnell, that this was going to happen. No, I said it. I said it loud and clear. He should have never approved that fake infrastructure deal. Never approved it. He approved that infrastructure deal. By the way, this is the same infrastructure deal that A, he could never get through. Was Most of it's been sitting around already written for fucking years because everybody knows what's broken and what needs fixing. And now re Republicans are running on this shit. For trillions of dollars. The old, old broken crow is what he calls uh, Mitch McConnell because old crow is a form of liquor and he saw it on cartoon liquor bottles. And 91% of it is Green New Deal nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, 
I just said, nine, 91% of the bridges in this country are made out of chlorophyll, according to that. There's only 8% to 9% that's actually for infrastructure. Yeah. And then the rest of it is all just broadband and fixing lead pipes and stuff that is technically infrastructure, but I don't call it infrastructure. But he said, if we approve this one, they will never come back and ask for more. I said, yes, they will. And guess what? They're voting on it now. So maybe this speech can stop them because when Manchin hears me no. say he's going to lose West yeah, he'll laugh. West Virginia, and I'll that dude still has his job, dummy. Go down and campaign against him as hard as anybody can. As hard as anybody can. Well, that includes going door to door, dipshit. Yeah, go down there and the, the, the reason why are they why are they applauding so much? You want to know why they're applauding this much? Because this is the first time he's talked about campaigning against somebody who wasn't a Republican. He's getting a standing... Yes, finally! As, as a former Republican president, you're actually going to vote... You're going to go campaign against somebody who isn't a Republican. That's why they're excited. Fuck. He's supposed to campaign against Democrats. Why the fuck do you get points for that dipshit? You should have been doing that already. <laughs> no. <laughs> By the way, welcome to the show, everybody. This is a special Sunday report of House Parks Mega Worldwide. Settle in. Enjoy yourself. Grab a snack. You might need some popcorn. He looks a little tired. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, I don't normally do these on a Sunday, but... I figured, you know, it's nice to see you. And when cinema does that to Arizona, and I will tell you, we have a person that I believe is going to be the next governor. I don't think she's going to stand for it. I don't think she's going to stand for it. What the, what, what the fuck does she have to do with it? Okay, yes, she can turn down um, some of the federal funding. Knock yourself out. Run on that. You know, it's interesting. Run on the CHIPS Act. Run on fighting the chips act. With Manchin, so I got along with him very well. <laughs> he wanted to know Jerry West could get the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I said, Jerry West, great athlete. Could Bob Cousy get one too? Yeah, Bob Cousy, great, right? Everybody agrees. Yeah, yeah, surely. Yeah, totally. He's easily great. But I got along with him fantastically well. Couldn't have been better. Call me all the time. We had a good relationship. And he said when the impeachment hoax started, I would never vote against you. You're a great president. Yeah, I'm sure this is a direct quote from Manchin. I will never vote against you. And when we were counting up the numbers, which we won very easily, by the way. But when we were counting up the numbers, I say one Democrat I know for sure will never vote against me on impeachment is Joe Manchin. So they're taking the votes and he voted against me. I said, oh, he must have made a mistake. Perhaps he didn't know what they were doing. But I said to Mitch McConnell, what a fucking lunatic that he will do this and he will hurt our nation and he will hurt the Republican Party and he will hurt independents and he's going to hurt the Democrats. He's going to hurt everybody. But Mitch McConnell has hurt our party very badly. Should have never happened. Yeah. Mitch McConnell should have never happened as a what? His dad should have pulled out. That's what I'm going to... I'm there. I said it. And I said it, and I said it publicly when they approved that horrible infrastructure deal. And horrible deal, which is a deal, you got to admit, and it did get passed. And they go and they do this. And they're not finished yet. You know, they still have a little time left. But McConnell is the most unpopular politician in the country, even more so than crazy Nancy Pelosi. And... And something has to be done. He raises large campaign contributions for senators, and that's how Yeah, that's how he stayed in. Yeah, he keeps Republicans in office, dummy. It's his fucking job. I can't stand the dude, but, but please, uh, beg your pardon, if I may. That's how he holds on to his power. And even I tell some of the senators who I'm very friendly with, which is most of them, you saw the vote. They call, they say, what do we do? You know, all of a sudden they're offered 20, and it's hard for them to raise money. 
But McConnell will offer them $20 million because he raises all this money and he offers them to many of the senators, not all of them. And they'll call me, what do I do? What do I do? I said, take the money. Take it. It's all right. Don't worry about it. He'll end up where he ends up. Take the money. They need it. <laughs> take the money. I'm not going to give it to you. I'm basically sucking up all the other funds. But it's not a good thing. And under the Trump administration, we had the greatest economy in the history of the world. We That's just weirdly a lie. We had no inflation. None. We had no f inflation. It's, uh, we, had, we had deflation. We had uh, utter collapse, actually. It was just, nobody could even. We had no riots. We had no illness. Believe it. They, they wrote books and they're writing books on it. Biden created the worst inflation. They wrote, uh, well, who, wait, what? No inflation. We had no f inflation. It's, it was just, nobody could even believe it. They, they wrote books and they're writing books on it. Biden yeah. They wrote books and they're writing books on the fact that Trump had no inflation. <laughs> I can't. In inflation. Nice try. Um, by, by John Barron. Biden created the worst inflation in 49 years. 9.1%. I believe it's much higher than that. Yeah, it's got to be higher than that because it's coming down and it would never come down if it was not. Yeah, by the way. And it's going higher, costing uh, families nearly 5000 and now they're estimating six to 7000 10000 Why don't you just say twenty? At this point, $40,000. There is a $200,000 tax per American on... ...dollars a year. Think of that. $7,000 a year. After the pandemic, we handed the radical Democrats the fastest economic recovery ever recorded the history of our country ever recorded that's because you're i mean again when you're crawling out of a ditch to ground level and you were at ground level primarily even and even the gains themselves they're not guaranteed but a certain measure of them will happen automatically as soon as the problem moves on it's like saying we before the hurricane hit downtown we had a great downtown revitalization project and then it hit and then we got federal funds and we rebuilt downtown we were in the process of rebuilding town we were building downtown at a faster rate than it had happened since downtown was built because we had to build it all they've turned that into two straight quarters of negative economic growth no <laughs> it was 0.6 and 0.9 percent wasn't negative economic growth. Also known, despite their protestation. As a recession, which it's not. To the contrary, as a recession. And just hope that the recession. Also, contraction is not negative growth. That's the. And by the way, the contraction was 0.6 it was and then 0.9. So the growth was actually going in the other direction. But there you go. With depression, because the way they're doing things, it could be a lot worse than. So bad. I mean, you don't even know. It's so terrible. Recession. And the labor. Yes, this is from yesterday, Eileen. Labor force participation is the worst in many, many decades. That's the number that you have to look at. Totally. Look at that number. Don't look at the jobs that are being gotten. Look at the people who don't have to have two jobs. It's terrible. George Bush famously said of a woman who had three jobs, that was uniquely American. That is, it's so. I rebuilt our military, including our nuclear capability, and we hope to God we never have to use it. But I rebuilt it. They had. I put pinwheel hats and gold Trump lettering on every nuke. And also, uh, some of them have verses from two Corinthians. They had equipment and they had rockets and they had bombs that they had no idea if they even worked. They were so old. It's all new or newly renovated. Yeah, some of it has just new. It, I took the old nukes and I gave them a new backsplash. It's on this new show I'm pitching called Flip This Nuke. And the power is greater than any power ever in the history of our country. But it Except for, what's his name? I'm blitzing on it right now because it's like the Jap Japan guy, but he's like, 2,000 years, the Christmas guy, you know who I'm talking about. I don't have to tell you, you know, 
It's not even believable. In the history of this world, and we just hope it never gets used. And we created... <laughs> he was... I guess he was a, hoping for a big applause on, I built a bunch of new nukes. A thing called Space Force. They smiled at it. Biden smiled at it. And it's turned out to be so important, not, as you know, in Space Force, not for 79 years since Air Force has anything like that been done. 79 years, Air Force was the last one. Now it's Space Force. Remember the first day they laughed at it? Oh, Space Force. They thought they were going to end it, and the public went, Crazy, because you people know much more than they do. They surrender. Yeah, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're going to get rid of Space Force? No, we, we're just going to not call it Space Force anymore because it's a it's a part of the Air Force and we it's always has been. And we're just, if you call it Space Force, it pushes towards the militarization of space and therefore gives China the green light. And they've taken it as precisely that and have started putting... Uh, you know, sal satellite killing satellites up in, never mind. Our strength and our, our everything, our dignity, mm. and turned Afghanistan into the greatest humiliation our country has ever seen. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, honest to God, you, you do realize that you can't call anything else embarrassing legitimately since then, if that's it, if that's the peak. Not the fact that we were leaving, because I was the one that got us down to a small number of... So except, except, hopefully he'll remind everybody, maggots, some of you are here watching the show right now, um, if you haven't already seen this speech, where he says, I was getting us out, except we were going to stay in, uh, in Bagram forever. Soldiers, but we were going to leave with strength and with dignity, and we were going to keep... We were going to slam the doors we left and go... Don't let the Lord hit you where the good Lord split you. Oh, no, the door hit you. But, but never mind. Goodbye. Click. <laughs> Bagram. I hung up a door. I don't know. Not for Afghanistan, but because China's nuclear plant. Yeah, see? You're going to stay in Bagram forever. We're leaving by staying. Plants are one hour away where they make their nuclear weapons, one hour away. It's one of the biggest airfields anywhere in the world. Cost us billions of dollars many years ago. I was going to keep Bagram. And you know who's occupying Bagram right now? China! And the fake news doesn't want to mention it. Yeah, uh, the fake news that aren't here. Um, China is not, quote, occupying Bagram right now. There, I said it. But... But... <sighs> that's not ringing anymore. Nobody's really... You guys aren't... I'm not getting any... Oh my gosh, Kathy. Thank you so much. No tomatoes, though, dear. Um, because to understand it's tomatoes scare the man. Also pineapples, very dangerous. The way we left was a virtual surrender. Oh, fuck you. When you leave, you don't take your soldiers out first. You take your soldiers out last after. <laughs> yes. What you do is you get everyone else out and you leave your soldiers in danger for as long as possible. Also, we didn't take our soldiers out first. I don't know what the fuck that is. The American no, honest to God, I, I'm, I want anyone there, I want someone to walk up to one of the people at Supac or any place like this and go, when he says they, we, you wait and you take your soldiers out last, we took our soldiers out first, what the fuck do you think he's talking about? Because I, honest to God, nobody fucking knows. Americans get we put 6,000 soldiers in to help with the extraction. Get out. And you take your soldiers out after your equipment is taken out. Yeah, yeah. The equipment is more important than the soldiers. If a soldier has to die for a, a, a barrel full of lug nuts, so be it. And all of that was happening. It's so happening. And the thing was going on. Just so stupid. This is the most incredible. So embarrassing. That he managed, it's the biggest embarrassment in my life because he managed to do it and I didn't have the guts to do it. Blunder. And the fake news doesn't want to write about it because that's bad for them. Look, you don't even hear about so many bad things. You don't ever hear about them anymore. We could Because they're over. We're no longer in Afghanistan spending $300 million a fucking day. Created the safest border in U.S. history by far. 
Uh, apparently not, because the wall didn't help at all. By far. Yeah, COVID did that for you. It was amazing. I created, I fixed it. The best way to stop immigration is have more cases in America than Mexico has of a deadly disease that no one has a vaccine for. It was amazing. Kept everybody out. And now it's the worst border ever in history. There's never been a border. Not even a third world country. I like it. And that right. includes, in my opinion, third world countries, because there's no third world country that would allow millions of people to pour in. They have no idea. <laughs> Dude, uh, where do you fucking think most of the Afghans went at the end who went to Iran or Pakistan, who fled the Taliban that you released? Idea. Last month. 141 countries were... Uh, 104, wait a minute. Last month it was 141? Congratulations, folks. We're down three whole fucking countries because it was 144 the last time we saw this nonsense. ...represented not just your three plus Mexico, 141... Your three plus Mexico? You mean Honduras, Guatemala, and... What? Ch Chile? What? Are, which, what's, what's the third one? Mexico and what was the other one? Countries were represented with people that came in. Illegally. Yes, they all had flags, and we all know it. We're going to be paying a... You think it's Brazil? I don't know, Water Goddess. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> price for this for many years to come in terms of terrorism and crime. The Hispanics are great, but they're all dangerous, and the fact that they can walk around is going to endanger all of us. We ended catch and release. We deported record numbers of illegal alien gang no, the members, <laughs> most of whom were American citizens and they wouldn't take them. And we built hundreds and hundreds of miles of border wall. In fact, we completely finished our original border. wall. This is the new lie, which is I finished the wall. I did finish it. We were doing more wall <laughs> wall plan. Despite two and a half years of horrible Democrat inspired lawsuits and Democrat inspired lawsuits inspired. Oh, you mean the democratic idea that no U.S. president should give territory to Mexico for free? Litigation. By the way, first president in fucking 150 years. And I won all of that. those suits. And then we started and we did some job. And that gave us these incredible numbers that, frankly, everyone talks about today. No, they don't. <laughs> and the number of people coming in, that's not... Three, no one even. Three million. Or it's like 20 four million. million. 20, 50, 11 million, 5 to 50 million. In my opinion, it would be anywhere from 10 to 15 million people this year. 10 to 15 million people. Yeah, I mean, the population, if that's true, the population of the United States is now 370 million. But we have no idea who the hell they are. <laughs> and we can't find a single one of them. Millions of them all over the place. And yet, they're like invisible. They're like n ninjas. We then added much more of the border wall. And most of that got finished too. Wait a minute. You you then what? Sorry. You then what you did? But we have, it's not 3 million or 4 million. In my opinion, it would be anywhere from 10 to 15 million people. <laughs> This year, 10 to 15 million people. We have no idea who the hell they are. Mm -mm. We then added much more of the border wall. And most of that got finished too. Three weeks was all it would have taken. Three weeks and it would have... Yeah, apparently they've already finished that part. They, they shut the gates that you hadn't built yet. Because you were bottlenecking people through the gates. And completed the extra addition that we added. The border was the best ever. Think of it. Best. So good. Especially when the wall blew over. It was the best ever. I went to Mexico and I said to... Oh my God. This is the... Give us 28,000 troops. You'll never get it. And they had a list of things. And, uh, the president of Mexico, who I like a lot. He's a socialist, but I, I even like a couple of socialists in the world. About three. <laughs> yeah. Kim Jong-un... But I said, uh, President, you're going to have to give us 28,000 troops. I said, President, you're going to have to give us... To protect our border while we're building the wall. No, 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 I cannot do that. No, I think you have to. No, 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 I cannot do that. And we started a negotiation. 
a woman from the State Department, good woman. She said, you won't ever get any of these things. I said, yes, uh, if you don't know, if you haven't met a State Department woman before, she is a character that Trump made up who's been around for 25 years and has been incapable of doing her job and yet held on to it in the deep state through Republican and Democratic State Departments alike. I said to the Border Patrol, who's fantastic, by the way, give me your top 10 things. And yes, that was his Mexican president. That was... Uh, Obrador speaking, I suppose. No, I cannot do that. No, I cannot. No, sir, I cannot do that. I said, give me your top 10 things that you want. And they gave me 10, and the woman looked at me. She laughed. She said, sir, I've been dealing in Mexico for 25 years. You won't get any. I said, no, no, I'll get them all. I'll get them all. Guaranteed. Guaranteed I get them all. And she's smart. She was a good woman, by the way, but she's been doing this for 25 years. Yeah, there she is. She just, you know, her name is Woman. Uh, she's, she knows the Japan guy who died, who was very good for Japan. She said, you won't get anything. And what happened is the top representative came in. We met in front of this woman and others. This woman, whatever her name was. And I said, you're going to have to give us 28,000 troops. You're going to have to do a thing called remain in Mexico. In other words, people can no longer come into our country. Yeah, they don't. That's not Mexico's choice. That was Title 42. That had to do with it, that. He just saw that law was on the books because of the pandemic. He used the pandemic to do that. You have to remain in Mexico. Hundreds of thousands of people Ugh. remain in Mexico. So hundreds of thousands of people remained in Mexico, but now millions are, st are, are storming across the border. And eight other things, which were in many ways, probably, Matt, probably worse, right? Probably worse. Eight other things that were probably worse. Name one of them. And I remember he laughed at me. He said, oh, we won't do this. He thought I was crazy. I said, no, you're going to do it. You will. You do. No, we won't do it. We will not do that. We're not going to give We won't not do that. Give you troops free. We're not going to give you troops. So we're not going to give you remain in Mexico. Why would we do such a thing? I said, because on Monday morning, I'm signing an order that every single car that you make and every single product that you sell into the United States will have a 25% tariff on it. And everybody in Texas had a fucking heart attack because it would have ruined the state entirely. And all the U.S. car makers who make their cars in Mexico because they, uh, they, they built factories there um, took a giant shit in a hat and handed it to him. Hold on one second. I'm fixing. Uh, there we go. <laughs> and he said, well, may I leave the room to make a call? I said, yes. five minutes later, he comes back. Mr. President, we would be honored to supply you with 28,000 soldiers. We would be honored to accept hundreds of thousands of people all over Mexico and remain in Mexico until we check them out. It was uh, pretty amazing. We got all 10 things. It took about five minutes. So what were the other eight things? I mean, he brings those up. One of them we know is COVID. Um, the other 28,000 part, debatable. Um, but the rest of them, what were the other ones? It was longer to create the piece of paper that he had to sign than it did to win the negotiation. But we don't do that too much. Uh. You know, we have a big advantage over China, but people don't know it. Oh, yeah? We have an advantage over Russia. Big, big, but we don't know it. Nobody knows it. Nobody knows it? Nobody nobody but me who's always talking about it? What? What's that advantage? The fact that we're not a racially homogenous country and that our demographics aren't taking a shit like those that are? They don't know how to use it if they did know it. No, they don't know how to use it. If they did, we wouldn't have the AUKUS agreement and, oh, shit, and Nancy Pelosi wouldn't be going to Taiwan. Oh, shit, we wouldn't be reshoring chip factories at the fastest clip in American history. The border was the best and safest in U.S. recorded history. <laughs> because disease was the biggest threat on Earth? They've turned it into a nightmare. Mm. So not, well, for you. So quickly. So quickly. The election was rigged and stolen, and now our country is being systematically destroyed. <laughs> they rigged the election so they could flood us with Mexicans. Where, that's what I'm running on. It worked last time. And everybody knows it. 
and this corrupt January 6th of unselect of unselect people. They're unselect. Yes, they're unselect. Un makes a word not good or less. They never comment when I use that. See, unselect can be. Yeah, we, nobody's impressed. That's why. I, I mean, we've t I've talked about it on this stream a few times when he brings it up. It's one of the lamest fucking things he's come up with. Because it's his. He didn't come up with Make America Great Again. He didn't come up with America First. Then he, uh, he, and he road tests him. He even said, people were saying MAGA, and I didn't think MAGA would work at all. And then we started saying MAGA, people went crazy. And then <laughs> they, that he comes up with his own because he thinks he starts smoking his own stash. And thinking, I got to, uh, I'm good at saying that. I said Little Marco and Crooked Hillary and Sleepy Joe. And even though I borrowed all those as well. And people love that. So I'll say, I'll start my, here's one of mine. The unselectment. It's an infrastructure bill, right? But this corrupt group of people, these are the same people that went after me for the impeachment hoax. Number one, number two. The same people, Russia, Russia, Adam Russia, Russia. Shifty Shift, the same people, they look into the mics. They call them watermelon head. And they lose, and then they go into the next one. It's a disgusting. If they'd use the same energy to go and make our country great, it would be an incredible thing. But I don't know if they can do that. They are doing it, dummy. But I read They passed an infrastructure bill. And twice. I a bipartisan one. I won twice. And did much better the second time than I did the first, getting millions and millions of more votes than in 2016. And like yeah, but you paid for them. Uh, for the record, I'd just like to say that that all what? these all the stolen votes that were uh, done. The reason he knows where they are is simply because he paid for all of them. So just what? reminding everybody that YouTube. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of voter fraud, and Trump paid for all of it. By the way. What's the standing O he, he gets for Likewise saying? getting more. See that? That's why, that's why he got a high CPAC rating because everybody else has fucked off. They're not coming to that anymore unless they're on the Trump train. Nobody even bothers. More votes than any sitting president in the history of our country by far. And now we may have to do it again. We may have to do it again. He says that to keep people on the tit so that he can, you know, he can, well, keep himself on theirs, I suppose, would be the better way of saying it. But he says we may have to do that again. It, that is, they have, ta they have talked about the, le the legal languaging that he has to use to say he's running while not running to the these people who will continue to give him money for his Save America Pack. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, Slayer this, Slayer Chick, this is just fuck the same dull shit to the same dull people. Thank you. It's so sad what's happened to our... So sad what's happened to our country. We're getting the lead pipes taken out. Bridges are being fixed. Rural broadband is on the way. They, they even tried to make the child tax credit permanent. It's gross. Country. We're like a third world country. At all. We're totally like a third world country. Yep. Americans without Trump were basically garbage. You know, the American flag is just useless without him. Election. Without him wiping his dick on them. So we're like a third world country and airports. Has anybody been flying around lately? Yes. You're trying? Yes. We're like third world. But first we have. No, we're not. The fuck? First of all. Any problem with airports that are, you know, like LaGuardia or something that just need a total facelift and they need a shit ton of work, that's been an ongoing problem for years. That's how these things, especially airports, which require a tremendous amount of investment and then just altering them. I mean, airplane traffic is difficult and dangerous enough without changing the function of the entire building around the, you know, the planes that are coming in and out. So... It, Getting it done is a multi-year process, but the fact that he failed at any kind of an infrastructure bill or getting any funding to repair airports is one thing. The other thing is, is that a bunch of them are getting the facelifts right fucking now. We have to win an earth-shattering victory in 2022. We have to do it. We got to do it. And by doing it, we're going to have to cheat is all I can. We have to cheat. Uh, that's what they would do. So what? we're going to have to do it. 
we're going to have to uh, rig the elections ourselves because what? unless we rig them, they will rig them and therefore they, they are rigged by something they call reality, which no one what? can even believe. It's so... Coming up in November. So to win in this November, this election needs to be a national referendum on the horrendous catastrophes the radical Democrats have inflicted on our country. Horrendous catastrophes. Okay. Like? The Republican Party needs to campaign on a clear pledge that if they are given power, mm -hmm. they're going to fight with everything they have to shut down the border, stop the crime wave, beat inflation, and hold the Biden administration accountable. They in, in countable. They have to. Have to hold it accountable. They have to hold it account incountable. Job number one for the next Congress is impeach Joe Biden. Lauren Boebert's going to do it. Uh, I would just like to note that uh, we've been watching this for a while now, and you've already gotten used to the fact that there's a picture of him and Epstein behind him. Thank you very much. Totally. Job number one for the next Congress and the next president will be to restore public safety. People are walking outside and getting shot in the head. <laughs> Sorry. That's not funny, but it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> People are walking outside. You can't even just kabam. I mean, don't do anything about guns, but people are going outside and they're being, <laughs> they don't go anywhere. Because of the radical left's merciless crusade to, merciless. to dismantle law enforcement in America, our country is now a... Well, apparently San Francisco cried mercy because they got rid of Chesa Boudin. So, no, not really. ...school of crime. Like By the way, they, we also elected Joe Biden, who was not the defund the police candidate. For the record, the guy that kicked your ass. Right never been before they've never seen anything like nothing that. like this i mean the 90s and the 30s and some in the 60s and obviously in the early 80s like it. other countries are talking about it we're talking yeah they talk about it. other countries if you go to never in american history have you gone to another country and had them say things like chicago bang bang talking about democracy isn't it great and then they say you had seven people killed in chicago this seven this weekend you had 68 people shot. That's not democracy. That's yeah, democracy would have gotten rid of the Second Amendment a long time ago because the majority... Oh. That's not what we stand for. Savage criminals are being released on cashless bail to continue... But enough about Lee Zeldin's campaign co-chair. ...their violent rampages against the United States of America. Is that what they're doing? I thought they were just attacking citizens, but apparently it's an attack on... Oh, it's, they're kind of like, is this him equating, um, is this him sort of balancing whatever, um, yeah, I guess he would like to try and try and bring up the January 6 attackers, make every like rando criminal the moral or ethical or geopolitical equivalent of the Jan 6 attackers and therefore any murder like, look at the number of murders. They attacked, sure, we attacked the Capitol during the counting of the Electoral College, but look how many people shot, uh, at, at, held somebody up at a gas station. Entire communities are being torn to shreds with stabbing, shootings, stranglings, rapes, and mur stranglings. murders. Stranglings. On that little piece we showed you, did you see the man with the knife in the back? Did anybody see that? No, they, they didn't watch it. They were all getting drinks before your speech. I looked at it. I didn't notice it the first time, and I looked at it tonight. I'm getting ready to come on. A knife right in somebody's back. Yes, uh, stabbings have been known to happen in world history, even. I mean, I wait for him to... to, to a knife in somebody's back. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to go, it's, it's like that guy must have felt like I feel every time that Mitch McConnell talks. The streets of our Democrat-run cities are drenched with the blood of innocent victims. <laughs> They're drenched. 
drenched. It's like the fucking Shining. If you go to the mall, it's like opening the elevator doors of the Shining. Gun battles rage between bloodthirsty street gangs. Bullets tear into crowds at random, killing wonderful, beautiful little children that never even had a chance. Um, so at least he's in the Sandy Hook really happened crowd, I hope. They're struck and they're killed and carjackers lay in wait like predators hunting their prey. They want that car. They're going to take that car in Cal. I need that car. We're going to have that car. I'm going to wash that car right out of my hair. California. People are leaving the trunks of their cars open so criminals don't smash the windows when they try to rob their valuable. The trunk of their car. Mm -hmm. They leave the trunk open. They do. To maybe distract them. And inside, they've got like a present. And when you open it up, it shoots. It farts glitter right in their face. So that they don't break the car and break the back of the car. when Yeah, they break the back of the car. The, I don't know if you know. It, it, stop me if I'm getting too technical. The car has a back and a front part. And the trunk is in the back of the car. And it gets broken when they break it. They try and steal the tire and what's ever in the trunk. The tire. <laughs> Whatever's in trunk. What do people keep in trunks? I don't drive, so I have no fucking idea. So they just leave it open, take it. But please don't destroy my car. Just don't break the back of the car. <laughs> in Los Angeles, burglars are stalking people back to their homes to clean out the entire house. At oh, okay. Those are, those are maids, I think. At one point, they follow them. They live in Beverly Hills. They live in some... If, what, if they live in Beverly Hills, why are they following them? Can't they just wait until they come home and look out across the street? They, the Jensen's are back. Should we rob them? Yeah, I guess so. Nice community. They follow nice. them back and they go into the house. And they do things that you don't want to know about. Oh, oh, I do. I want you to tell us. Are these the stranglings? And this has to stop, and it has to stop now. I mean, it's a Sunday. I can, uh... They have too much junk in their trunk. Some people think having junk in the trunk is a good thing. Not these criminals are after the junk in your trunk. We are going to make America great again. Magoo. Over and over. Make America great over and over. Magoo. But we have to make America safe again first. Massa. It's time for leaders totally. who have the courage to say what needs to be said. Which is... And do what needs to be done. Has do it and say it. Say it. Do it. Do what you're saying. Do what you do when you say what you said to me. It has to happen. It has to be happened. That's why. It has to be happened. Guys, it's got to happen and it has to be happened. Who have the courage to <laughs> say what needs to be said uh -huh. and do what needs to be done. It has mm. to happen. It has to be happened. That's why. It has to be happened. Yeah, the best words. When I see two it has to be happened. Tudor. When I see Carrie, when I see the people that are running, these people are not going to play games. They well, they don't have a choice to run. There's, I mean, there's murderers in the streets. They're afraid they're to. They're, they, you have to run. You run from your door to your car. You run from your car to the store. You run from your store to your car, and from your car to your home. You don't go anywhere, it's, um, unless you want to get shot. Our country back. They're going to bring our country back. They're totally going to do it. I mean, in some ways it's already happening and they're gonna make it happen as it's happening. It has to be happen, to be happen. What, what is happening now, Raj? Repair the damage from Democrats. Mm -hmm. Gutting of police forces nationwide. Defund the police, how about that? Defund the police. Who even thought of such a thing? Now they're saying, well, we really didn't say that. Oh yeah, they did. And now they're saying it again. No, they're not. Never going to change the next guy. Never going to change because Biden got elected and he didn't run on defund the police. Congress should spearhead the largest increase in the hiring of police officers in American history. Well, it would be behind uh, 
the newest package by Biden and Clinton's package. Hiring tens of thousands. But that's, I mean, in a lot of ways, in all fairness, Clinton's package has always been bigger than his and been more road tested. More officers nationwide. <laughs> Shit. Make our city safe. We have to leave our police alone. Let them do their job. Give them back their respect. They know what to do. We have to allow them to do it. Yes, without people charging up the steps and beating them and tasing them till they have a heart attack and hitting them with Blue Lives Matter fl Oh. And the room goes deathly silent. <laughs> By the way, these are these suck-up moments when they bring up cops and soldiers and that kind of stuff where he pretends to give a fuck. He doesn't. You know, when I came out here a little while ago. Yes, we remember. It was, Lee Greenwood was. Playing. I have a consultant and he's a very nice person. He's a rhino. He's got a consultant who's a rhino. Another fictional person. Does he know the, the State Department woman and the, and the general who says, sir? And he said to me, sir, I don't think you should say that last statement. I don't think you should say it. it's really not good. I don't think it'll be that. What statement was that? What what last statement? Did he just skip the part where he said you should kill drug dealers? Because that's what he's referring to. He said that in that in his other speech. Does he think? Do you think he's like lost where he was? That popular? I said what? You mean the fact that we should let police do their job, sir? I think it's probably not going to be received well. I don't care. First of all, no bullshit. Of course it's going to be received well at CPAC, you dumb son of a bitch. You have to let them do their job. I am always pushing against the deep state, especially the ones I hire to tell me that I'm wrong, which lets me know I'm right. He's a rhino, but he's a nice person. We'll probably keep him on the payroll, you know? <laughs> you know, you're paying for it, it doesn't matter. We need to return to the tried and true strategy of a thing called stop and frisk. We have to take the guns away from people. Uh-huh, but then do, take the guns, then do due process. That are criminals. And yes, what about the ones that are not criminals up until the moment they shoot up a school? That's, that's the part that, where the rest of us are just trying to, you know, like, it's one thing to go, well, I'm not involved in the, uh, you know, illicit drug and human trafficking. Therefore, the chances of me having a shootout with someone I met in a parking lot to work on a deal is very slim. But that whole thing about assholes walking into grocery stores while I'm just trying to buy some fucking Fruit Loops, that concerns me. Can we do something about, about that, please? Because that seems painfully random. Instead of taking guns away from law-abiding Americans, let's take them away from the violent felons and career criminals. The career criminals. The weirdo. They're weirdos. For a change. Yes, he, he did say career. Taking guns away from law-abiding Americans, let's take them away from the violent felons and career criminals. Career criminals. For a change. I'm trying to kill you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, b b let's first start by taking guns away from everyone at CPAC. Look, it says up there, fire Pelosi, save America. It says it right over Epstein's ear. <laughs> President Donald J. Trump, in case you don't know who he is. And we also need a no-holds-barred national campaign to dismantle organized crimes. These are street- Yeah, take away the organized crimes. Not the criminals. Organized crime is an organization. I'm fine with that. It's the organized crimes. I want- We need to stop all these really well-planned crimes. And we also need a no-holds-barred national campaign to dismantle organized crimes. These are street crimes that are really organized. Like they have a phone tree and a squeegee calendar. All of them have like a word of the day 
They do. They get up. They have a morning ritual. They're real go-getters, and that's what worries me. These crimes. Organized crime today is on the streets, and this administration doesn't want to talk about that crime. Huh? Asshole! It's your friends who want to dismantle the fucking FBI. They want to talk about what they think are other crimes, and many like what other many people say they're not crimes. Those yes, things that are crimes that are not crimes, like. Telling the the, the uh, IRS that your building is worth one hundred fifty thousand when it's worth one point five million, and telling the bank that it's worth uh, three point five million when it's worth one point five million, and then splitting the difference and uh, buying yourself some a picture of yourself with charity money. Those aren't real crimes. We have to round up the drug dealers, the gang members, and the dangerous offenders. Charge them for their crimes and get them either out of our country and back to where they came from or put them behind bars. We're going to go back to old-fashioned, tough-on-crime Republican talking points. These, I found these uh, phrases in some notes that Newt Gingrich had left in an old... He used to keep a little, like, card drawer with uh, index cards and add some of this on there. I remember these. If you look at countries throughout the world, there's another thing. Please don't say it, sir. Uh oh. Oh yeah, this is it. this is what he's talking about. Please don't say there's another thing. Please don't say he forgot that he hadn't said this part yet. They just line them up and they give them a quick trial and then they shoot them. And that's what we need to do with drug dealers. Okay. 500 people per drug Please, dealer. Sir, I've been doing this for 30 years, sir. Then I looked at his list of wins. It's not too good. Why'd you hire him then, fucko? You hired him. Yeah, I mean, I know. It's a good gr a good crowd today. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Glad you could be here. Um, we got over 2,000 people just in the chat. Very impressive. Thanks for being here. If you're on Twitch, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. If you're a troll, thank you for being here uh, and, and spreading us to the rest of the algorithm in a way that we couldn't possibly do without you. Please don't say it, sir. If you look at countries throughout the world, the only ones that don't have a drug problem are those that institute the death penalty for drug dealers. That's it. If they don't have a drug problem, well, then why do they keep having to institute the, dr the death penalty? He's going to do his China thing. China has a huge drug problem, by the way. Thanks, Matt. Hi. Hi, Facebook. Um, thanks for being here, um, and you have the most trolls among you, so be gentle. They're, they're not used to him looking this bad, you know. They, you have to understand, when they squint, he looks like that Rambo picture. Mm -hmm. When I was in China... Oh, fucking hell. And until the plague came in... When I was in China, I had a very good relationship with President Xi. Mm -hmm. We made a great trade deal for our men. Mm, so good. Manufacturers and farmers. One second. But after the plague, I don't even talk about that deal. Too no, it's a terrible deal. It turned out I was, I thought it was really good. It turned out it was really shit. Much damage done. But I had a great relationship with President Xi of China. Strong man. You could go all over Hollywood. You couldn't get an actor to play the role of President Xi. Is uh, it great? Sure you could. You just... Winnie the Pooh. I mean... Guy in many respects, but he... He's not too in love with our country. I can tell you that. But I said very innocently, do you have a drug problem? What a douchebag. First time I'm a... And he looked at me like, what kind of a stupid question is that? No, I said, uh, President, do you have a drug problem in China? I said, President. No, no. I said, President, you're the same first name as the guy from Mexico. Isn't that weird? Is it weird? Have you ever met the guy from Mexico who runs Mexico? You both have the same first name, President. Hmm. Let's see. Um... Let's 
Let me try to do this. Hold on a second. There we go. Well, no, I don't have it. Why would we have a drug problem? I said, well, what do you do? Oh, quick trial. Quick trial. I said, what's a quick trial? Quick trial is they bring drug dealers quickly to trial. And if they're guilty, it's immediate execution. Now, it's no, it isn't. Sounds horrible. Sounds horrible. Listen to the woo. That sounds horrible, but... You st by the way, you start guilty over there. You have to prove your innocence. Every drug dealer in this country, they say on average, will kill at least 500 people. Some people think it's much higher than that. So... Every single drug dealer. So every kid who dealt weed in high school or in college, you killed 500 people and you should get the death penalty if you're ever caught. Just saying. You would stop it. And I believe... If you instituted the death penalty for drug dealers, traffickers, I believe that drug dealing would go down 50% on day one. 50%. I really believe that. I think, I think. Um, it, that's because you're a fucking lunatic. It goes down the day you instituted it. I'll tell you one thing. No, it doesn't. It didn't there. If I'm a drug dealer, I'm going to say, no, thanks. I'm going someplace else. And that, so are. Other people. In Singapore, you see what's going on in Singapore? Very rich society. Very powerful on drugs. They have no drug problem whatsoever. A lot of money. Plenty of money to buy drugs. They have no drug problem. Yes, they do. They have the death penalty for drug dealers. Right. And they keep having to kill people. Why is that? Because people still deal drugs there. Even with the fucking death penalty. If it's solved it immediately... And, and by the way, once those people are fucking dead, they're dead. Like, there's no, oops, ah, oh, fuck. My bad. That wasn't, uh, that was, that was, that, that wasn't cocaine. That was mannitol. It was a baby laxative. Other countries likewise. We form blue ribbon committees where we put our great first lady, Melania. She's in charge. He put her in charge of a blue ribbon committee. By the way, he thinks this is a terrible idea. Because when you form these blue ribbon committees, they uh, they don't accomplish anything. Therefore, let me just boast about my putting my wife on one. We have a blue ribbon committee headed by the first lady and very nice people. Fine, fine people. Dilettante, socialites. If they ever met a real killer drug dealer, they ever met El Chapo or any of these people, I think that would be the end of them. They'd say, yes, it would, because those people are fucking dangerous. Be the end of you, dummy. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> but we have blue ribbon committees headed up by great people that really are well so good. And we were, and I will tell you, our first lady did a good job. She worked hard and we got drugs down 19%. That's great. But you know what that is? It's mm. like nothing. And today it's worse than it's ever been because the border's so open that not only people are coming through and bad ones, criminals are emptying their jails into our country, but drugs are coming into our country at a level that we've never seen before. Fent yeah, being caught. Fentanyl coming in from China. You know, I was with Xi and I said, listen, you can't send fentanyl. You can't do it. He was, they were really cutting down. They were really cutting down. Things were going really well. And then this tragedy happened in November two years ago. A tragedy. It was a tragedy. November two years ago. Oh, you mean the election? I thought he meant COVID-19 in, in November of 2019. Silly me. For our country, what happened? Because of what's gone on. All they had to do is leave everything in place. This place was going so good. It was so good. And we were getting rid of all these sick people. Themselves. What, a, what a sad thing. But when I see these blue ribbon committees, it's the kind that Melania would head up and her friends. And I'm like, what a waste of fucking time. They're never going to amount to anything. Just and everyone wants to get on. Could I get on the blue ribbon committee, says the local architect. <laughs> says the local architect, you know, you know, that old chestnut. Yeah, but they don't know. They don't know what's happening here. No, they don't know what's happening. No, you need. The death penalty for drug dealers. Drugs will go down immediately by 50% and probably more. Probably more. Some people are even saying 150%. People will people will start um, squeezing drugs they used to do out of their out of the holes in their arms like the crow. But you have to mean it and you have to mean it.
yeah, you, you got to kill some people. Um, and then, you know, if, who cares if they turn out to be um, innocent after the fact? <sighs> Singapore executions under scrutiny is more hanged for drugs. Questions being asked over speed of executions, legal representation for late stage cases, and ethnicities of the condemned. Oddly enough, they, most of the people who get killed are from specific minorities they're trying to get rid of anyways. Uh, Paneer Selvam, like Paneer Selvam Branthaman, Socrates was sentenced to death, but while awaiting his punishment, the philosopher began to try to learn the flute. But uh, we are going to die tomorrow. What will that be of use to you? Another man said on death row. Um, Paneer has a message for us to bring back society and the government. Uh, we can't change the past, but we can uh, make use of the time we have now, she said, as she appealed for his sentence to be commuted. Um... After a two-year pause due to COVID-19, the city's government has returned to executions this year at what seems like a reckless pace. Already eight people have been hanged, while two more executions were scheduled for dawn on Friday. The speed of these executions this year is really astonishing. There was a clear backlog. Um, now it's like any time they could be calling you. There's no more uh, predictability. It's just constant anxiety. They didn't, uh, say Angelica's brother Paneer is an ethnically Indian Malaysian uh, one of many people from the ethnic minorities on death row in Singapore, where 74% of the population is ethnic, ethnically Chinese. She's wiping people out. Who, and yeah. when you look at China and other places, they don't have a problem. They don't have a problem. I mean, uh, you kill a few innocent people and your problem's gone. If they had that problem, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing right now. What are they doing right now? And they weren't. They had this problem many, many decades ago. And other countries, far smaller, were able to invade them and take them over because everybody was suffering from drugs. Yeah, they were suffering from drugs. That's what it was. They, because they were all high on, so they couldn't fight back. And they said, we can't do this. So <laughs> it's not- it, it, You guys got that right. I don't have to, we don't have to review history. That makes sense, right? Very politically correct to say it but you'll save millions and millions of lives. Last year, we lost probably 250,000 people to drugs. 250, there's no war. If you were at war, these are numbers that are bigger than war numbers. Than war numbers? Yeah, don't get me started on heart attacks and car accidents. 250,000, they say it's 100,000. I say it's much more than that. It's probably much more than 250,000. It's probably 600,000, basically. They're killing all the white trash and replacing them with Mexicans. That's the plan. And if the Democrats take over, that's how they're going to do it. But you also have destroyed millions and millions of families throughout our nation because of drugs. In places where there is a true breakdown of the rule of law, such as the most dangerous neighborhoods in Chicago, mm -hmm. the next president should use every power at his disposal. Yeah, nukes to restore order mm -hmm. and if nothing's more orderly than a crater if necessary that includes sending in the national guard of the troops no we don't police our country with soldiers <clears throat> it's one of the things that makes america great you fucking dolt <laughs> listen to all these these are republicans uh, theoretically who are applauding the use of military troops to police cities Every American of every background deserves to live in safety and in peace. Every American. That's right. Which is why today I'm signing a, an executive order in my head to put a chip in every American so that if at any time they do anything I consider to be on the no-no list, um, they will, their body will go numb and they will fall over and then we will freeze them and put them in a drawer. One of the until we can have a trial where they're not present and then kill them. The things that we were saddled with, and one of the hardest mm. decisions I had to make when I looked at some of these cities that were run by Democrats going so bad so fast, I wanted to send in the guard, I wanted to send in the troops, and sometimes I did. In Minneapolis, I sent in the troops and saved the place. No, George Floyd's brother stopped the fighting and in. in uh by saying, this is not what my brother would have wanted. 
that that literally that night it started to ease up. The the guard came two days later. I was getting ready to send him in Seattle when, if you look at, I guess it was Antifa took over a big portion. You don't read about that too much. Nothing happened to those people. A very little. Yes, they did. I think nothing. I think nothing, nothing. And most of them are now in government there. But they took over a big portion of Seattle. The troops were ready to go in and they heard that. All of a sudden they decided to leave. No, the, the Chaz security force or the CHOP security force, depending on who you ask, because it wasn't really defined, killed two black kids and covered up the crime. They stripped the vehicle the kids were in after they had shot them and hid all the evidence. So the mayor went, fuck this. So much for this summer of love horse shit. And they, that's why they stopped it. Thank you very much for leaving. But, you know, the president is not supposed to be doing that. The president is supposed to do it at the request of the governor. Well, right. Well, when the governor was a Democrat or the mayors or Democrats, they don't want any help under it. That's because the people in those areas choose the kind of people that would not want federal troops on the streets in certain circumstances. They'll handle it themselves. Thank you very much. I don't know why Texans are for this. They're, the room is pretty fucking quiet, so I don't know how they feel about this and why. Any circumstances. <coughs> very much like on January 6th, where I offered Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of D.C. from 10 to 20,000 troops. Bullshit. Because I thought the crowd was going to be very, very large coming. And very violent and psychotic. And I mean, it was all my followers. And you're going to need ten to 20,000 people just to keep them from destroying the place. Because my followers, maggots are insane. And because I felt it. You yeah, I felt it in my butthole. You could see it. I can see it. And they turned it down. And if they didn't turn it down and cash... They didn't turn it down. Patel is a witness. He's a liar. Right? I think you can, I can say you're a witness. No, he isn't. But we have many other witnesses to that. From 10 to 20,000, they turned it down. And had they not turned it down, you would... I would have been able to, to, I would have picked those National Guard troops from the states that were suing Georgia and effectively ordered them as president under the Insurrection Act to turn around and help people attack the Capitol. And then I would still be magic president. Wouldn't have had January 6th as we... Know it. Yes, it would have been successful instead of a massive fucking failure. But the president is not supposed to be sending in it at will. Right. I think the next time either we're going for a very quick change or we're sending them in because we're not going to let Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, Portland. Portland is, they don't even, when the storefronts, they don't even use new storefronts. You know what they do? They just put up wooden barricades now. For stores, for the future. True. That, that no one lives in Portland anymore. It's gone. Remaining places a burned out hulk. And it, uh, husk, I think is the word. When the storefronts, they don't even use new storefronts. You know what they do? They just put up wooden barricades now mm -hmm. for stores, for the few remaining. Places a burned out hulk and nothing happens to the husk. Husk, I think is husk. A burned out hulk is uh, what I would call um, the hulk character in, in Ragnarok. Those people that have destroyed. No, like you, friend of Bannon. That place, that city. Is that that hole in the, I don't it's know. It's also time to take back our streets and public spaces from the homeless and the drug addicted and the dangerously deranged. How do you do that? Because no civilized no. society can no. allow this depravity and squalor to continue. You can't let this happen. Places like San Francisco, the backyard of Nancy Pelosi. She, by the way, has a big wall around her house. You know that, right? But it's so bad. It's I, I don't know that that's the case. I think she just lives in an area that's pretty nice. It's gotten so bad. People are leaving. Nobody wants to have office space there. Who would want to have an office space when you walk in? Yeah, nobody wants an office in the tenderloin like they used to. Through a lot of people that are unfortunate and in many cases, very sick, mentally ill. It's actually dangerous to walk into your office. If liberal liberals think that- Liberal, liberal liberals. Those are the people who drive liveries. It's somehow compassionate, then you're gonna have to let them invite the homeless to camp in their backyards, in their homes, and ruin their property, and attack their families, and 
use drugs where their children are trying to play. And all of a sudden, that'll stop very quickly. The yeah, this is totally a fair reading of the entire story. The only way you're going to remove the homeless encampments and reclaim our downtowns is with blowtorches. You got to introduce the death penalty for homeless people. I was, I was with President Un. I said, President, what do you do about your homeless? He says, what? We don't have homeless. Perhaps we don't have homeless. And I go, really? And he goes, why you ask we have no homeless? I go, well, how do you deal with it? And we use flamethrower. Is to open up large parcels, large tracts of... Huge tracts of land. Relatively inexpensive land on the... Yes, relatively inexpensive land on the outskirts. You know, in California where there's lots of open land. The outer skirts of the various... The outer skirts, I see. I didn't realize that's not like a hoop and skirt. And claim our downtowns is to open up large parcels, large tracts of relatively inexpensive land on the outer skirts of the various- Yes, the outer skirts. You know, it's like the outer limits, but in a skirt. Cities, and bring in medical professionals, psychiatrists, psychologists. People with lozenges. And drug rehab specialists and create tent cities. You have to have a damn- You gotta create tent cities. Hooverville. Tents right now. They're living in tents with holes in them. Give them good tents, but in another area. Yeah, golf courses would be great for these things. You don't have time. You don't have time to do this. Round them up. Use nets. To build buildings. You ever seen Planet of the Apes? How they catch the people with the nets and the horse? Do that. You can do that later, but you have to get the people off the tree. We have to bring back, we have to reclaim our cities. And now you'll have people... So well. That will be taken care of. We'll have doctors. We'll have. Yes, it does sound a lot like socialism, Mark. Everything. Yeah, these are drug concentration camps. Mm -hmm. We'll get them all in there. We'll build a wall around it. We'll feed them all the fentanyl they can stand. And if any of them can not take the fentanyl and survive, we'll let them out. And we have to relocate the homeless until they can get their lives back and then come back. To where they want to be on the street and we'll bring a lot of them back they will come back they will they're all gonna come back to the same stretch of what but the right fuck? now nobody's coming back you have no medical help you have no nothing it's so dangerous those streets first of all yes you do one of the reasons why we have skid rows in this country why the tenderloin is the way it is the way the, why certain parts of downtown la are the way they are is because they're right near the service facilities los angeles is so bad skid row is where the drug rehab places is, is where the hospitals are is where the mission is san francisco Every city that's run by Democrats so bad has all the people in it and uh, makes all the money. We want them to succeed. We want people to succeed. But, but we want them to succeed in internment camps the way God intended. Um, they I cannot can, be I allowed not. to turn every sidewalk and public park into their personal campground. It's no, we should... The government should take huge tracts of private land or public land and turn that into their own private internment camp. So dangerous. Ground. As everyone here in Texas knows firsthand, there is another horrific disaster uh -oh. we must oh boy. confront if we want to restore safety in our country. AR-15s, guns, uh, cheap guns, straw purchases of guns, bullets, so people stockpiling ammunition. At long last, we must... Stop the invasion at our southern border. Oh, okay. We're, we're back to the southern border. Can we deal with this shit already? It's not an invasion. Ask the Ukrainians. It's an invasion. Our country is being invaded. Texas needs high Mars that shoot antibacterial soap. Whoop, 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 whoop. They're walking out. There's some gaps in there. Our country's being invaded. By brown people. Just like a military force was. 
No, not at all like a military force. Most military forces are not made up largely of women with children. Pouring in. Just last month, an illegal alien here in Texas was indicted for the cold-blooded murders of four elderly women throughout- It happened when you were president. Throughout the state, and he's been accused of links to the deaths of at least 24 people. And he managed to do it as soon as he got the green light from Biden. 24 people, perhaps the deadliest- <laughs> The funnel cake stand. Serial killer in Texas history. They're now saying he could be the deadliest serial killer. He's an illegal alien. Earlier this year- <laughs> He could be, he probably is, and probably who he killed, knowing him as well as I do, probably the, the it, even more. He's killed more people than were born in Texas. You hear this, and it's, it seems unbelievable. Here, an illegal alien fugitive with a prior arrest for aggravated assault and many other arrests viciously shot and killed a Harris County police officer at a traffic stop. No reason whatsoever, none. Well, no, I, I'm guessing he was trying to escape and he's an awful human being and he was engaged in violent crime and the cop pulled him over thinking it was a regular traffic stop and the guy got the drop on him and shot him. But his reason was escaping from what he knew this guy would discover about him and therefore he killed it. Wasn't he? And in New Mexico last year, an illegal alien. I'm just guessing. Alien criminal out of jail on unsecured bond was charged with decapitating a man, mutilating his body, and kicking his head around like a soccer ball. Or <laughs> okay, for fuck's sake, what's wrong with the Texas DAs? They go, sir, I just love soccer. Get the fuck out of here. All over the public park. Think Kicking his head. Oh, hold on. Quit it. Please, this has got to be a... Uh, July 6th, Okay, so this is the case he's talking about. Hold on. Bond denied for dangerous uh, Las Cruces man accused of park beheading using head soccer ball. Joel Arseniega Sainz, Sainz, a homeless person who Las Cruces police say admitted to killing a man by cutting off his head and using it as a soccer ball, has, was denied bond Tuesday during a detention hearing in court. In denying bond, a judge found him uh, to be dangerous to the community if released. <laughs> really? I'm so glad that sentence is in there. Police have said that he confessed to the crime and investigators said they had recovered a bloody knife that was used in the attack. Yeesh. He's a homeless person who said he admitted to killing him. Okay, there's an update down here. Court documents obtained by ABC7 lay out the gruesome details. Uh, Tony uh, confessed to using a knife to decapitate 51-year-old uh, James Garcia and that uh, he, he then kicked the head. Okay. On Sunday night, police were called after the victim's body was found in Ap Apodaca Park. Um, it's also found at the park covered in blood. An officer said there was a bloody knife stuck in the ground near him. He's charged with first-degree murder. Claimed Garcia had raped his wife four years ago and at some point also stole his belongings. And court documents stated that he stabbed the victim multiple times and cut off his finger. Uh, they learned he was accused of shooting and killing a man. Okay, also learned that this guy was accused of shooting and killing a man at uh, a motel in 2017, but those charges were dismissed. He was also accused of vandalizing two businesses in April. Uh, the police late Monday identified the victim as James Garcia and said multiple sharp force injuries from a stabbing attack led to his death. Garcia's body was discovered in the roadway on Madrid Avenue. Investigators also disclosed the murder suspect 
was arrested after officers spot him in the park with significant blood stains on his clothes and saw a bloody knife stuck in the ground near where he was seated. Suspect arrested. Um, Donna and Donna Ann, a county jail booking records on to show uh, he was being held without bond. Okay, original report. Uh, no word on, was this guy, I mean, he's homeless, but no word that he was illegal. I guess the name is enough. Was he making the case? Hold on. Anxiously shot an illegal alien fugitive Harris County police officer at a traffic stop. He's talking about people who've crossed the border illegally and are, are guilty of crimes because this is why you need to stop it. No reason whatsoever. No reason. None. And in New Mexico last year, an illegal alien criminal out of jail on unsecured bond was charged with decapitating a man, mutilating his body, and kicking his head around like a soccer ball. Okay, I no, let me see. Is there more to this? Uh, June 22nd. August 5th. Minnesota, let's see. Minnesota beheading says that this is August. Okay. So I make a machete broad daylight in Minnesota as an illegal immigrant from Cuba was wanted by ICE. I like to write the brutally murdering a video goes to Toronto's went on a body decapitated. Okay. There's a uh this guy, this uh this Cuban dude cut off his girlfriend's head and yikes, right. Um and no word about him kicking around like a soccer ball, but he was an illegal immigrant wanted by ICE. And he's from Cuba, though. Um, he and he he uh, he's forty two. He killed fifty five year old America Mafalda Thayer while they were sitting in traffic in Minneapolis. Uh, Thayer's body and decapitated head were found dumped by her car in the middle of the intersection. It has since emerged that he was charged second degree murder. Blah blah. He's tried. Uh, to remove him from the, sorry, ICE had tried in 2012 to remove him from the U.S., but his native Cuba would not approve the travel documents. Instead, Sabat was released on an order of supervision. Um, emergency, who's charged with second degree was in the, oh, so that's just because he was illegal. I see. So it wasn't that he had killed anybody else at that point. He was just, you know, uh, in here illegally because they knew he was a criminal. For a lengthy criminal history in the U.S., domestic abuse convictions in Minnesota and Louisiana, pending charges in Minnesota, first degree arson, uh, damage to property uh, from last year, which is during the riots. Um, at least one domestic abuse following that arrest there had begged a court to throw out a pretrial no contact order so she could see him. Oh, she actually asked so she could see him. I live with Alexis Surbrett, support it for four years. We never have a problem. Uh, we don't have anyone in this in this country and don't speak English. I need to be in contact with him to help us. Um, so she has to be rejoined with him. She she went to the court and said, please let me be with him. And then he ended up decapitating her. He's here illegally from Cuba. Meanwhile, the other dude that they're talking about was, uh, did not, he, the, the soccer ball dude, um, New Mexico. Yeah, here we go. Same dude, I think. Yeah, Las Cruces. Um, he cut off... This is the guy he killed. Um, uh, dodged a murder charge in 2017. Is now... Who dodged a murder charge. Okay, I don't like he was arrested. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Remained in jail without bond. Uh, described the grisly scene. According to the records, police officers were called to the park, right? We saw that. Officer found his uh, head about 10 yards from the rest of him. Um, he's also missing the middle finger, blah, blah, blah. According to the probable cause affidavit, uh, um, Sainz alleged that Garcia had uh, raped his wife four years ago. He did not identify his wife for investigation for investigators, though. Uh, said that he, his wife, and Garcia had been hanging out together several days before the crime when he and uh, his wife fell asleep. Garcia stole her belongings, according to court documents. He said he tracked Garcia to the park where he confronted him about the alleged theft. Um, I'm guessing they, yeah, they they were homeless. They were, you know, 
living in and out of a motel and on the street and back and forth. That's why the guy went back and forth to the park. And then he, this, this is the guy. Um, and so prosecutors, okay, this is the, and this is the story about it. authorities charged him. Uh, sorry. Uh, it was outside smoking. Okay. There was a, when he was accused of being shot, his girlfriend, Dakota Campo came to a hotel where Sands was living to spend the night. At some point, a fight apparently broke out and Montoya was fatally shot in the chest. Sands told the detective he was outside smoking when the gunshot was fired. When Ocampo was questioned, however, she indicated that he was the, he may have been the shooter. Uh, they charged him on witness statements as well as blood allegedly found in his clothing. It was later discovered that Ocampo had been arrested in a separate case at a 38 caliber pistol, which matched the caliber of the weapon that had been used to kill Montoya. Her, that the woman had the gun that killed the dude, um, Matt, the caliber, but the murder weapon, according to court records, the murder weapon was never found. Okay. The prosecutors dropped the murder charge in 2018, citing the need to, for further investigation. Uh, the dismissal delivered a harsh blow to Montoya's loved ones. They were mad because they let this guy out and she had a gun that was mad. Okay. They, this is like, all right. But uh, again, like just, just take, look how he took all the details from like, three separate cases and then just mush them together into like a smoothie of racism and bigotry all over the public park think of this I'm, i did i i didn't just think about it i looked it up it was his he knew the guy personally he didn't randomly pick some sort of like where's the most american person i can find animals animals never forget every by the way uh tell everybody there that the guy who cut the dude's head off also cut off his finger and stabbed him a bunch of times, but that he said that guy had raped his wife. Ask everybody in the crowd, if somebody raped your wife, would you do that to them? And then see if the see if the story goes one way or the other. Jesus Christ. Every death at the hands of a criminal, illegal alien. Even when it's another illegal alien or that neither one of them are illegal aliens, they're both all illegal and I believe in aliens is entirely preventable. This is all preventable stuff. Well, again, that guy wasn't, but whatever. Hi, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide, by the way. I'm, this is a special report. I'm just doing this speech because fuck me. We remember Kate, don't we? We remember Kate. St yeah, it, it, tell, tell them all about Kate. Standing in San Francisco with her father. We remember that a man who came in five times at least, and shot beautiful Kate dead. Jesus Christ. Republicans in Congress was... Beautiful Kate, listen to her name, Kate, and his name was something like Garcia or had an O on the end. You know it's bad. Make clear that on their watch, not a single penny of taxpayer money will go to funding Joe Biden's open border agenda. It's a sick agenda. It's a sick agenda. Yeah, if it existed, I you know I I think that'd be fairly easy. Um, it's kind of like Cory Booker's thing about defund the police. Yeah, totally. Let's sign on to it. It doesn't exist, so it's not like we're cutting funding. Makes no sense. Yes, it doesn't. That's why nobody ever said it. Not well, not in the Biden administration. And some things make sense, you know. Some people do. Yeah, I agree. I something. understand the other side. You always have to understand the other side. You got to understand it. I understand the other. I understand that. The other side. I do understand. It. Open borders, there's nobody has open borders. It makes no sense. You know, we fight and spend billions and billions and even trillions of dollars defending. Well, not anymore because we're out of Afghanistan, but okay. The borders of countries that are 7,000 miles away, but they don't want to spend any money to defend our border. Well, we actually, for the record, even in Afghanistan and in Iraq, we did not defend any borders from anybody coming in. Like that Ukraine is, is very different and you can argue that, yeah, even in Syria, like none of it was about, I mean, this asshole was, you know, on behalf of Turkey and Syria, we're both pushing back on the Kurds. Maybe that's what he means. Makes no sense, does it? Ugh. It doesn't make any sense if. I mean, it's not actually happening, but... Next year, we have to use the purse strings to send a message to every would-be illegal alien. In Spanish and Portuguese, mainly. All over the world, if you break... All over the world. Break into our country illegally, you will 
be caught, we will detain you and we will quickly send you back to the place from which you came or put you in prison immediately. Yeah, so if you're coming from a destitute country where people are uh, tr- are eating l- like garbage to stay alive, come on over here. We'll put you in an American jail where uh, you'll get three hots and a cot and medical help for as long as you want to stay. In its own way, <laughs> a form of open borders. Let me see. Do I... Do I want to be in a war zone where my children are in danger of having their hands chopped off? Or do I want to be in an American jail? And we did that. We, we totally, told people they, they totally did remember that. the remember that at the beginning we had these big caravans. We didn't have the caravans and they already now they're starting at caravans. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Yes, I have not seen anything like caravans recently. We haven't seen that because it's not occurring. But But the Obama administration had a big problem before us because they would bring people into Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Mexico, lesser extent. Yeah, to them, not as much. And they'd bring them back and they wouldn't let us land the planes. They wouldn't let them. Oh, that's that's bullshit again. We tried to bring them back and they wouldn't do that. Fucking hell. They wouldn't let them. Thanks, Philip. Come back into the country. By the way, like and subscribe. Give a thumbs up. If you feel like super chatting, please do. Buy me a coffee if you think I'm doing necessary work. (laughs) You see, you'd have the worst gang members in the world, mostly MS-13. Again, he's there. He's, ladies and gentlemen, unless you haven't met him uh, before, uh, Donald Trump. MS-13's PR spokesperson. And if they came from Honduras, we couldn't get them. By the way, they're not anywhere near the top cartels and and the violence and drug trade that they inflict. They're relatively small by comparison, but he keeps puffing them up because he likes it. Back and Hey, see how I knew the ELO song. I had some incredible people in my office, Border Patrol people. These people. Guys like also Tom Holman. You guys don't know how tough they are and you wouldn't want to do it. And then they go into a nest, nest also known as a gaggle, and then they fight them and you wouldn't want to. We're going to get Mark to that part Morgan. of it. Mark, what was his name? Sorry, what was his name again? Sorry, run that by me again. Wait. Some incredible people in my office, yep. Border Patrol people. Guys like also Tom Holman and Mark Morgan. And- So many others. So many others. These are great people. They're great. You're not their tough. These are brave people. They're tough. They go into a gaggle. But they'd be in and they'd say to me, Tell Oh my me, gosh, Carrie, thank uh, you so much. We can't bring them back, sir, because the country won't allow. I said, Really? Why won't they allow? They won't allow. They don't want MS 13 back in their country. They force them out. They put them into caravans. They force them out. And why wouldn't they? How smart? I mean, you don't have to be. They don't want them in their country. They don't want them. I don't want them in that contract. Why do you who wants them in a contract? So what happens? Uh, what happens? I said, all right, good. How much money do we pay those three countries? We would be so happy to take them all back. This is such Sir. Hard. This has been a lot. Sir. We pay them four hundred million dollars. Seven hundred and fifty million dollars a year. It's a lot of money, right? It's peanuts compared to what we pay to some, but seven hundred and fifty million. I say that's all right. Put that's all right. Dad and notice immediately that we're Stopping payment. We're not going to pay anymore. And And they're like, we would be glad to take the pursuer. We would love to take the purple. Same shit. They said, sir, I don't think it'll work. We tried everything. That's why. This lady in the State Department, her name is Lady, said, woman, State Department woman said. We kept them here because we couldn't get them out. That's all right. You let them know we're not going to pay any more money to them. The following morning, I had calls from... The three presidents of the country. Same fucking, uh. President, president, there seems to be a problem. Our funds have been cut off. Yeah, they've been cut off because you wouldn't allow these people back that you probably pushed into our country because you didn't want them because they were criminals and they were. MS-13 started in the United States. In jail in many cases. You got to take them back. Oh, president, this was just a minor misunderstanding. We would love to have. So, oh, I see. So he calls them president. They call him president. Everybody just uses president. MS-13, come back into our 
And they took him back, and we couldn't get him out of here fast enough, I will tell you. True. true. Not true, but true. It's true. That's true, Carrie. Carrie will do it. Carrie? Carrie will do it. She, I mean. He's going to stop him at the border. There's nobody coming in. Arizona, that'll be a safe place again. This guy Kelly, by the way, he's done nothing. He's done nothing. Blake Masters is going to do a fantastic job. So good. Harry. Yeah, what did Kelly do but help coordinate the building of, what, eight chip factories? Kelly's got nothing going. He never did a thing. Never, ever. Just an astronaut. Never did a thing. <laughs> never did a thing in his life. We will also need a record increase in the number of new ICE officers and Border Patrol officers. All right, we're going to see this whole, like, we need to go and fight like hell and blah, blah, blah. To resume the enforcement of our immigration laws and to deport the illegal aliens Joe Biden is refusing to deport. He won't even, they won't even take out illegal aliens out of- No, they won't. They're not deporting anyone. No one is being deported from the United States at all. Um, I'm sure that's true. There we go. Biden suspends rules limiting immigration, arrest, deportation. Uh, the Biden administration has suspended an order that focused resources for the arrest and deportation of immigrants on those considered a threat to public safety and national security. The Biden administration reacted to a federal court ruling in Texas uh, uh, and react, uh, sorry, reacting to a federal, has suspended an order that had focused resources for the arrest and deportation of immigrants on those who are considered a threat to public safety and national security. The Department of Homeland Security said in a statement Saturday that it will abide by the decision issued in the month, even though it strongly disagrees and is appealing it. You only got limited resources. We wanted to focus those on the people who are dangerous, but fuck us. We need to kick some kids out because, you know, we don't believe their asylum claims. Uh, immigrant advocates and experts, blah, 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 many living in the country illegally will now be afraid to leave their homes because they're detained. Prioritizing them arrest said, uh, we simply don't have enough ICE agents to pick up and put into proceeds everyone who violates our immigration law. So one of the reasons, one of the things you would do is focus only on the people who are considered a danger to the public. But fuck that. Of our country. In addition, we should pass much tougher penalties for repeat immigration violators of which- Yes, if they keep trying to get into our country, we'll put them in jail and pay for their life and their food and their housing and everything. There are many of you a foreign national who repeatedly- I totally do, uh, Water God. Yeah, I'm totally a big fan of MS-13. Tramples upon the- I wasn't originally sold on MS-13, but until Trump really pointed out just how amazing they are. The laws of our nation, you should be looking it's spending a long time in jail. We can't do it anymore. We can't do it. We're like the poor, stupid people that take everybody, including criminals and some of the worst murderers in the world. As we secure the border. We're like, that's what we're like. I mean, it's a good analogy. For another key priority for Shit. the next Congress and the next president will be to drain the swamp. Well, I thought that was already done. You didn't, you didn't manage to do that? He's like, wait, is that still in my... That's still in the teleprompter? Oh, is this, is this an old speech? Am I dreaming? Hype train. Thanks everybody in Twitch, by the way, for the hype train. Just, or sorry, uh, Joe Space, Kath, thank you. Um, Stargal, thank you so much. Thanks Travis for the super chat. Oh my God, this is so tired, same shit. To remove rogue bureaucrats and root out the deep state, Congress should pass groundbreaking reform, empowering the president to ensure that any federal employee who is corrupt, incompetent, or unnecessary for the job can be told, you're fired. You ever hear that? You're fired. Yeah, fired. Yeah, fired. Yeah, that's exactly how he used to say it on the show. 
I can see why they hired him to do that because he's really good at it. What are you looking at me for? You're the ones that's friends with Jeffrey Epstein. Our current appeal. Yeah, I hired. <laughs> oh, fire. That, that sounds like Mr. Bean doing an impersonation of Donald Trump. Appeals process to remove these bureaucrats, people that can really be bad. They can even be thieves. You can catch them stealing large sums of money. You have to go through a three-stage appeals process, which takes on average five years per stage. Fifteen years. You'll be gone. You'll be out of office by that time. <laughs> Wait a minute. You want to speed up the speed at which p criminals in the government can be called out? Right. In other words, to fire someone who is doing a bad job if the government wins will take more than a decade under the current system. Almost all politicians won't start that process because they'll be gone and they know it. You know, a lot of- Wait, they freeze that or is he- The politicians, they go to Washington, they're all set. And then they get caught up with people that say, hey, I'll be here a hell of a lot longer than you will. <laughs> you mean like Mitch? And the politics. You mean like everybody else in the Republican Party who still has their job? The politician just goes about having nice dinners. We can't do it. Nice and hot. Me too. Anymore. We got to run this country properly. We got to do it. Because it's time to clean house. Of the rhinos. And what? The rhinos have got to go. Washington, D.C. And we did a lot of it, but nobody knew the deep state it was that deep. We did a lot of it. Fucking hell, deep state. Get out of here. Deep state is the, is the equivalent of blaming the Illuminati for your failures. Grow the fuck up. As we take power out of Washington, we also need to- I'm eating a handful of popcorn every time he shits on Republicans, and that's, yeah, that's the excuse. I take power back from the left-wing lunatics who are indoctrinating our youth. <laughs> no school will be able to teach transgender to our youth. We have to finally and completely smash- Critical race theory from our- The radical left's corrupt education establishment, the current system is sick. It's sick. It's sick. It's so sick. The sickness is so sick. It's sicky. We have the lowest scores almost in the world. And now- We spend more per pupil than any other nation. School prayer is banned, but drag shows are allowed to permeate the whole place. It's so- <laughs> Right. Well, you can't pray in school. It interrupts the drag show in school. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> you can't teach the Bible, but you can teach children that America is evil and that men are able to get pregnant. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, most of us have... It, I'm sorry if I said if I embarrassed you, but... I just thought you were showing. Whatever it takes, conservatives must liberate America's children. Whatever it takes. That doesn't sound violent or crazy. Children from the captivity of these Marxist teachers unions. That's what they are. Where do they come from? Where are these Marxist teachers unions? Because they, they don't want to go to school and catch a disease we don't have a vaccine for in the middle of a pandemic. Do they even love kids? Oh, by the way, schools are all open. It's a, it, I mean, this is a word salad of his, like, of just the bigoted talking points the Republicans have right now. Just let it roll off your back. This doesn't mean anything. I mean, one of the worst things you can do is actually take this dickhead seriously. Even when they're clapping, they're like, yeah, I'm supposed to clap for this. Ugh. We need to defend parents' rights. Think of this. Okay, th I'm thinking of it. By the way, he tells you to think of something because he wants to put a thought in your head. It's like this, he read it in a management book or about public speaking a long time ago. It's so fucking irritating. I gave a talk. A talk? A few yeah, his TED talk. days ago, and I was talking about defending parents' rights, and I just said, you know. I'm going to repeat myself. His parents' rights. Parents' rights. You know, if I, as a man, don't want to ever see my kids... And the women should take care of all the work and stuff. That's the right, my right as a parent. They said, can you imagine we're even talking? We are going to defend parents' rights. Did you ever think 10 years ago, five years ago, 
that we would be fighting for parents' rights. What's more basic than parents' rights, especially parents' rights over their children? Yes, parent. Otherwise, is it really parents' rights? Parents' rights over their car. Uh, We're trying to defend. People are very parental towards their children. Parents' rights, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's almost as if we've dreamed up a way to try and uh, build on the charter school, private school, and voucher system that we've been selling for years under a different guise. I hope they don't catch on. Across the country, we need to implement strict Prohibition is on teaching inappropriate racial, sexual, and political material to America's school children in any form whatsoever. Yeah, and any no puppet shows, no pop up books, uh, I no revoicing Barney episodes to teach kids how to, to properly do man drag. Don't do it. Can't do it. And if federal bureaucrats are going to push this radicalism. We then we need privatized school in states and states have the right to, but this has nothing to do with CRT or, or gender stuff. It's just another workaround to get to privatizing school. Should abolish the Department of, of Education. Right? Of Education. Great. Great. After all these years, he's going after Rick Perry's old talking points. By the way, that was always it. Listen to the cheering. She, she seems convinced, this one right here. By the way, every time he says this shit, it's a constant reminder, he lost last time and he's no longer president. Why don't you sign an executive order to, oh shit. And we will keep men out of women's sports. Is he going to do the whole fucking swimming and the fucking weightlifting story and the, uh, that shit? We have to watch that shit again? If, it, if he does, I'm skipping it because we've seen it before. That's another one. No, no. Yeah. Let me get into this story. And by the way, we have a great person here. We do. Person. Because I don't want gender to... Where's our beautiful, great swimmer? Gaines. Where's Gaines? Look at... Come up here. Will you please come up here? Come up, come up, come up. This is a great champion. And she was beating everybody, and then one day she looked over and said, that's the largest human being I've ever seen. Come here. Come on up. Ugh. She's been so brave, you know, because a lot of people say you can't talk about it. They you can't talk about it. Tell me, please don't mention that, sir. It's not politically correct. Yeah. And no one on his staff says that shit. And I did. About three weeks ago, the place went crazy. It was the largest applause I've ever heard. Come on. Yeah, I wonder why he wanted her to walk up there. Up here. Look at this. Oh, God. Fuck you. Look at this. Look at this. She, this is just creeping me out. She's like almost, she, it's like Ivanka, but I'm not related to her. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hi, y'all. Um, I had no idea Nikki Glaser was going to be there. Okay, we'll skip her. Uh, yikes. Thank you. Oh, he went in for a second one. And much stronger than her. There's no way she could beat me in swimming. Do we all agree? Huh? Thank you. Ah. Thank you. Great job. Look at that. Look at that. Like, let's all watch her leave. No, I'd have a little trouble. It wouldn't be pretty. Well, you'd have her in buoyancy. I wouldn't invite too many friends to that one, but... But now, but how ridiculous is it, really? How ridiculous is it? The weightlifters, they're lifting numbers, oh they're breaking God. the records by hundreds of pounds. It's ridiculous. We've seen this before. Okay. ...out of our military. I had it out. 
Oh, let's get CRT out of our military. I had it out. The world is too dangerous for America. By the way, uh, diversity training in the military when you've got people who are relatively, you know, in racially homogenous uh, neighborhoods, for example, uh, getting them to work cohesively together, not a not a bad idea. Because armed forces to be politically correct. You look at what's happening with China and Russia. But yeah, two of the shittiest militaries in the world, no matter how much money they throw at them. But you look at those rockets going up one after another. Landing in the ocean, killing fish. And we don't want to be politically correct with our military. We got to be tough. Can you imagine George Patton? Oh my God, we're doing Patton. Did he play the Patton fucking video? You know, he, had a, he had a very strong temper. He was a very violent man, actually. Great general, violent. Very violent guy. Wife beater. Good, but that's not what you need. What the fuck? Okay. And he'd walk in and he'd be screaming at people. They'd throw him out of the military today because he wasn't nice. No, they wouldn't. Now, we have to, we have to get back to running things. You know, I had it totally out of the military. We, to, we got to get back to running things. I had it out of government through executive order, and you couldn't get the Democrats to go along with it, but it didn't matter. I had it totally out. Totally out. One of the first things they signed back in was that nonsense. And <laughs> no, they didn't. We can't let that yeah, happen. One we of have Biden's to take Biden's early executive orders to institute uh, gender pronoun uh, racial equity training in all military situations. Like, get the Back fuck over. out of here. We have to take over government. We have to run it like it's supposed to be run. Uh, unlike last time? The fuck were you doing before? I really didn't know how shit worked. I gotta be honest. That was the first year. It was like your first game of bowling after you haven't done it for a while. You get like 10 free frames. <laughs> We must also win the battle to restore free speech in America. We don't have free speech, as you can see with this microphone and this giant backdrop and this huge place where everybody's gathered and the camera's covering me. We don't have free speech. You can't even say these things or you get, uh, they strafe bomb you. Oh, we get napalm. Republicans yeah. across true star gal. government have to be ruthless in going after the new Censorship regime. It's censorship. It's the censorship regime. They're regiming the censorship. They're doing such a thing. It's worse than it's ever been. I've never seen anything. It used to be even 10 years ago, because I was always very active with different things. Yeah, sure. Showing up at charities I hadn't contributed to, sitting on the stage even though I hadn't been invited. I did a lot of stuff. And I'd fight the media. I'd I'd say something, they'd, uh, you know, you go back and forth. I, they, someone would plan a story that I was doing great, and it was me, and then people would doubt that story, and I would push back on the story that they doubted that I made up myself. It was a thing. Well, then you win, you lose. You like to win, but you win, you lose. Today, they don't even talk about it. We don't even talk about losing or winning. No one uses those words anymore. If you have anything to do with the election, they don't want to talk about it. If no, they don't want to talk about elections anymore. You have anything to do with certain things. Yes, if you have anything to do with certain things, that covers it. They won't even talk about it. They don't want to debate it. They don't want to talk about certain things. And if anything, you have to do with debating certain things that you talk about. You can't even do that now. January 6th never brings up the election, which is the reason all of those people were there. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. The bitch was cheating on me. They, all they want to bring up is the fact that I shot her and her boyfriend. They don't want to go. But I thought she was cheating. She wasn't. Now I know. But still, I should get points for... Th I killed her and her boyfriend because I thought she was cheating. And I know that we... Obviously, I saw... I hired five private detectives. They all came back and said, nobody's cheating. But my buddy kept saying she's cheating. And that's the guy she's cheating with. And I, how was I supposed to know they'd never even met? And they that was just a guy standing next to her at the grocery store. I don't know why, Your Honor, why won't you let me bring this up? They don't want to look at the corruption that took place no, in they Arizona. Don't. They totally don't. And all of the states. All you saw in Wisconsin. I was in with it. Wisconsin. And it was an incredible group of people. So good. All but the, the nursing people. homes, traditionally very few people vote in nursing homes. But in 2020, they had almost 100% of the people voting. Terrible, voted. so bad. 
And you know how they found out? Because you made it up the in children of elderly people in the nursing homes oh were my so God. angry. First of all, no. Secondly, um, for the record, let me remind everyone that every paid for fake vote that came out of an old folks home or some shitty, sketchy district, what? all were paid for by Donald Trump's campaign. That's why he thought he only needed two more million votes what? and he'd win. He, he was trying to win the presidency on the cheap. He thought for sure that because- What? Bi yes, it's true. Because Biden had, you know, wasn't actually having real rallies or getting people together, what? that that would be enough to keep him, you know, uh, you know, from winning and it wasn't. Just saying. Hold on one second, if I may. All right. My father, did not vote. He's he doesn't vote. My father didn't vote. He didn't vote. <laughs> My father didn't vote. Because the children of elderly people in the nursing homes were so angry. My father did not vote. He's comatose. He's, a He's been of sick. Comat He's ready to die. He'll know. be dead Whoops. very soon. Hold he on. didn't vote. My, why did my, why did my camera work weird all of a sudden? Hold on one second. I have to fix it because we got to have, we, we got to have baby Hal talking to this dude. Clearly. Hold on this one. And then we'll take this guy. Yeah. This, that right there. Hold on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now I don't know where, like, oh, because of the green screen thing that was turned off. I see. Close. That'll work. There you go. Damn, my, my, my father and a coma, a coma taupe. That will happen. I'm not big enough. Someone make me a bigger on screen. Make me a bagel. Not a beagle. Make me beagle. Beagle. Don't beagle. Make a beagle. There we go. Make me. Hold on. Make it the bigger. Make it big. There we go. Hello. Damn, that was so much beagle. That's the night. My favo is comatose. Sure. Didn't. What the? Oh my gosh. Don't have the thing behind. One second. Oh, this boy. Take this and fix this thing. Add it. And then the chroma key. And then close. And then, oh, got add picture. One second. Did the background got a thing, uh, got a thing on it? I'm going to take media picture and then do this. And then we'll take add existing. That's not a thing. I'm make a thing. I'm make a I'm make a thing. Hold on. There it is. I got it. It's good. Okay. Where the it's a little picture. Where the picture go? There it goes. That to go. Add it and then we'll hold on a second. And then we'll put this heel and we'll put it there. And then we we'll take it and we we'll make take it this and put the heel. That and now better. Hold on like this. Here goes. That better. Fix it. I'll work on a thing. My father in a coma. And you know how they found out? How'd they find out? Because the children of elderly people in the nursing homes were so angry. Yes. My father did not vote. He's My dad did not vote. He elderly. Comatose. He's comatose. He didn't vote. He said he was going to vote uh, for Trump. He, t he whispered it to me. He's been sick. He's ready to die. He'll be dead very, very soon. He He's sick and ready to die and comatose. He's going to be dead any second now. I know because I was in the other day trying to get him to sign the will again and they kept saying his arms won't move and I'm like, hey. He didn't vote. He didn't vote. Daughters and sons. They were yeah, and both. We're very angry about that. They're very upset. Report started. They have Justice Gableman. He came out with a scathing report. Very scathing. What about how crooked? He came out with a scabies report. The election was.
We should expose exactly what they're doing. Yes, don't expose yourself. What they're hiding, who they're silencing, and who is funding it all, and who is coordinating it. Everyone big behind the scenes. They're monster people. Run the whole world. Monster, lizard, lizard man people. They eat, and they run a whole world and eat baby milkshake. Go out, sign up now, by the way, for Truth Social. It's really great. It's, it's giving us a voice. It's giving us our voice back. Yeah, it's so good. It's really good. His singing voice has never sounded better. The list of... Ur I appreciate the censorship. Urgent task for the next Congress and the next president is endless, and we do not have to... No. Wait, we have to move quickly. Yeah, you don't have to. Don't wait. Don't think things over. Act impulsively. That's the best We don't one. have time to wait. Our country is being shot. <laughs> Hold on. What? Our country being shot? Oh, no. Who's shotting our country? Who did shot it? What happened? What are you talking about? President is uh, endless. Say and that again. We do not have to... Wait, we have to move quickly. We don't have time to wait. Our no. country is being shot. It's being destroyed. It's being, the country's being shot in the, in the pee pee. It's not good. It's almost as if guns are a problem. It's. People, there's a little bit of weird noise in the audience. <laughs> Not that kind of noise. Something we have to do for the future. The future of our country is at stake. We have to put a... We got to put a bulletproof vest on our country. We don't have time to wait years and years. We won't have a country left. What I used to say about Venezuela is true. We have to... A little bit of rumble from the audience. Save the economy. Defeat the Biden-Pelosi-Schumer tax hike, which is happening right now tonight. Maybe it's already approved. And I do believe that Mansion and Cinema will pay a big price for it. But think of it. This okay. This is the only group they want to do the biggest tax hike in history for Green New Deal stuff. <laughs> yeah, for Green New Deal stuff. You know, like uh, lowering prescription drug costs for Medicare. And they're just destroying us when everyone's doing so poorly on top of the gasoline, on top of the bacon, which is quadrupled. <laughs> on top of the bacon, which is quadrupled. Wait, the bacon. New Deal stuff. And they're just destroying us when everyone's doing so poorly on top of the gasoline, on top of the bacon, which is quadrupled. And stop the... What a weird, uncomfortable fucking laugh. Out of control inflation that is crushing America. It's got the, the bacon! Can workers and... Hold on one second. I gotta check something. I mean, it's not... It's not unheard of. Hold on. We have to check. Nothing wrong with checking to see. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> That's just terrible. Hold on. Hmm. I don't even know if this works. Because of the bacon. Uh, hey, hey, asshole. Leave me out of it. All right. It's bad enough. I got to be in a goddamn pan. And families, it's crushing. It's crushing everybody. They, imagine how I feel. I'm shaved meat. Never seen anything like it. Well, imagine. Look, look, look down. Look how I feel. To bring down energy prices. We have to abolish the Green New Deal. Yeah, it's important to abolish things that don't fucking exist. Um, sorry. Sometimes you just have to tell your, turn yourself into bacon. You just got to do it. A fake. It's a fake. It's a fake. It's so fake. Uh, we need to abolish it. Even though it's not doing anything. It's a fake. It's a fake. I'm faking it. A fake. I'm a big faker. And, you know, we had the cleanest air and the cleanest water. Yes, because no one was going anywhere. There were no fucking planes in the sky. In decades in my administration.
Yeah, which months were those? And yet we were producing. Was it 2018? No. Was it 2019? Was it the beginning of 2020? No. What? More All right. energy, more oil, more everything than we've ever done before. More it riots. Instead of begging for oil. More uh, infectious disease. Oil from Iran and Venezuela and other distant foreign nations. We should be pumping it from Pennsylvania, North Dakota, Louisiana, and if you don't mind, Texas, if you don't mind. I knew they'd like the whole, they don't like oil and God and guns, and now do they even run on it. We should once again require able bodied single adults to go back to work or train for a job in order to receive welfare and taxpayer funded benefits. We need the workers. We need the workers. I mean, there's two jobs out there for every person, but we need the, yeah. We have to eliminate all remaining COVID mandates and lockdown. Yeah, all those, man, the ones that are really, that, uh, oh, there aren't any. And we no Fauci in jail. Like we have to rehire every patriot who was fired from the military with an apology, and we have to give them their back pay. You mean the people who refuse to follow orders? We have to restore America first. We have to go back to the America first foreign policy. We have to be America first. Right now, we are truly America last. Are we? We're so true. We are. We're so, it's so true how we're America last. We are America last. Why are we America last? Explain yourself. Focus squarely on our national interests, and we have to keep the United States out of these ridiculous, endless foreign wars. Wars. Uh, well, we're out of Afghanistan. I, I'm sure you applaud that. Where they don't even want us. Where they don't even want us there. Obviously, the Ukrainians would love to have us. I'm just saying for the record. The We're not going. We're just going to give them stuff. But I'm sure they would love to have the American military. Build on my historically successful trade policies, we need to increase the president's tariff power. And we need to make my China tariffs permanent. We took in billions. How do you make tariffs permanent? What if they don't make shit anymore? What if they just shift their entire industry to something else? You can't do soybeans. All right, we're not selling you guys soybeans anymore. What do you mean? What do you mean you're not selling us soybeans anymore? Billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. No president has ever taken in 10 cents. Taken in 10 cents. Garbage, just nonsense. Not 10 cents. Not 10 cents. I don't even know why anybody. 10 cent is the name of a Chinese company. Maybe that's why he says it. Yes, no, no American president has ever invested in 10 cent. China doesn't like me too much. They don't like me too much. They hate Biden and Pelosi. They don't like me too much. We need to hold- I only sold them the largest order of beef, corn, soybeans, and pork in American history. Hold on. While Americans were in food lines. To our dignity and need to hold China accountable for the unleashing of the virus upon the world. $50 trillion of damage to the world. Not us, to the world. Not us to the world. We're fine. Actually, we're not fine. We're terrible. This is hell. We're all in hell. And we need to rapidly reduce our dependence. I also should be able to sue them for ruining my presidency. On China and other foreign nations by bringing our supply chains, factories, and critical industries back home where they belong. Like we already are. It used to be. Like it used to be. Not during my presidency. But back to the future, you know? Back to the future. <laughs> what? Yes, I know. Back to the future. Yes, we we need. What are we? Renewables will give us 1.21 gigawatts of energy. What? It, what? To be a strong nation. It, we, there are roads in the infrastructure bill, and where we're going, we don't need roads. Okay. Somebody, anybody hear that before? I've heard that before. America must be a manufacturing nation, and we were doing that. No, you weren't at all. We were doing that. Now they're sending it all back to other nations to make for us and to make a tremendous amount of money. We have to protect our total. Again, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Nobody does. Under siege. We're, uh, we're so being sieged right now. We're being over sieged. I would say even worse than being under siege. 
were over siege. Second Amendment, it is under siege. And restore the ancient and sacred right to self-defense. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry that nobody's against self-defense? I don't know what the fuck. One thing you know, they take away your guns. They're not taking away the guns of the bad guy, are they? Yeah, yeah, we're trying that first, actually. And everybody, every time we try, you guys call it a slippery slope. Sure, you want them from the smugglers and the straw purchasers and straw salesmen and the and at first, and then you know what that means. Next thing, knocking on the door, give me your guns. Can't we can't pass a law that stops criminals and psychotics from getting guns because I'm a criminal psychotic. What happens when they find out? Going to take away the guns of the bad guy. None of them are giving up their guns. We. <laughs> Well, it certainly have ease of finding new ones since there's so many fucking guns out there. We have to defend our cherished constitution and uphold our heritage as a society built and sustained by Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, name one. <laughs> Not disagreeing, I just want to see you name one. What would be, what would be those Judeo-Christian values? Uh, love thy neighbor as you turn the other cheek while you seek an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Also, free speech, but thou shalt have no other gods before me, and uh, shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Also, uh, you can be a, any religion or no religion, but I am a jealous God, and uh, you'll get smited if you have another one. And we have to restore one standard of justice in America. Yeah, we have two different kinds. We have white collar and blue collar. I don't mind if they go after the blue collar people, but I would like blue collar fines on my white collar crimes. That's all I'm asking for. One standard of justice. So unfair what's going on. Isn't it? The weaponization of law enforcement for political purposes must end. It must end immediately. Political purposes are the worst. They just... <laughs> There is massive prosecutorial misconduct going, uh -huh. going on right now. Terrible. All over our country. All, all, all over our country. Mainly in places where I've done business, frankly. The likes of which has never been seen before. They've no, nothing's like this has ever been seen before. Nothing ever. Never seen anything like what's going on right now. Nobody's ever seen this. Look at all the- Well, Al Capone did. People who are- And the, uh, Chrisley knows best folks did or in prison leona helmsley did prison or who's oh, and martha stewart lives have been and, uh, um yeah destroyed on january 6 destroyed a protest over a rigged and stolen election that nobody wants to look at oh we looked at it a lot while others are allowed to burn down cities and violently and viciously kill people and nothing happens to them well, no, you're going to jail if you're caught. You know, that's, that's the thing. Finding some of them because people wearing masks was difficult in some cases, but uh, they managed to do it. How about that? How about that? Prior to January 6th, I No one ever went to jail for attacking a police officer. Not ever in our nation's history. Most people don't Recommend it strongly. We mentioned it briefly before, but... Yes, you're repeating yourself. We know. I have to say it again. No, you don't that the National Guard or troops be brought in, but it was turned down by the D.C. Mayor and Nancy Pelosi. Bullshit. That's a lie. They requested a certain number. They were never offered the 10,000. And the number that they were requested, uh, Christopher Miller signed a piece of paper that said they couldn't be armed, they couldn't have shields, they couldn't have body armor, they couldn't uh, interact with protesters. Basically, I had to stand there as traffic cones. Would have never had a problem. Never would have had a problem. We would have just been able to hang Mike Pence ourselves. From 10... We would have had a much bigger gallows than that shitty Home Depot project that somebody managed to do. I was flattered, but... 1,000 to 20,000 troops. Is yeah, this is a big deal, by the way, because this is... The January 6th committee knows that they've got the memo. I've showed the memo before on my other stream, so... We don't need to revisit it again, but it, there was never any official request ever. Correct Pat, Pat Cipollone, or Patsy Baloney, as we like to call him, uh, was one of the people who was like, yeah, there was no official request. Statement, Cash, and Rick. Cash, say it, say it. Go out on a limb for me, buddy. I'm in deep shit. Can everybody? They were all there. They were. Thank you. So thank you very much.
They were all there. No they were all there. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about it anymore, except people who want to make fun of me. They never bring it up. It's not that they don't. You know what else they don't want to talk about? How about that phony story? I'm sitting in the back of the beast. Uh, well, it's a phony story that you were in the beast, asshole, because you weren't. You weren't in the beast. This is starting off as a lie. He's going to talk about that he, you know, the, the Secret Service story. He wasn't in the beast. He was in one of the SUVs. I wasn't sure if I should be honored because I felt very strong. And I had these two big, strong Secret Service guys. If one guy could lift 350 pounds, no problem. And I said, take me to the Capitol. No, sir, can't do it. So I grabbed the steering wheel to commandeer the car. And he rebuffed me, she said. He rebuffed. Interesting word. He rebuffed me. Yeah, like this. He rebuffed me. So my hands fell around another powerful guy, strong as hell. I know these people. These are very strong people. It's just Yeah, uh, but we all know you live under the illusion that you are strong as well. It's not my deal. And I started to choke him. I felt, you know, when, so when the story came out. Oh, by the way, the reason everyone is laughing is because they all know he's a wuss. He doesn't actually, uh, he doesn't actually I mean, think... He thinks they're laughing for another reason. He, he doesn't think he's weak. Some people said, I never knew you were that strong physically. Uh, yeah, you're not. And then I, they said I started throwing food all over the White House. No, I have too much respect for the White House. Uh huh. But that somebody could sort of believe, you know, that you could. Yeah, they could believe that. But to think that I'm going to be jumping into the seat Grabbing a wheel, being rebuffed, grabbing this big, powerful guy, his neck is like this, and grabbing, I'm going to take him. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, what well, we have to put. And, and guess what? And guess what? They're going to, they, all these guys, they're going to go testify. Secret Service put out an announcement, which they never do, put out an announcement that it never happened. No, they didn't. Which everyone knew anyway. No, they didn't. But they won't interview anybody from the Secret Service because they don't want to hear that. They, they've asked to talk to everybody. And I still see the Times writing about it like it. Like, like, it's n like they didn't just listen to the two guys who won't now testify under oath even though they've been asked to and they want to listen to everybody else who has given their text messages and will. It's something that happened. They don't want that. They haven't called anybody from the Secret Service to put no. them on the stand. It's a disgrace what's it's so terrible. going on. It's a one-sided witch hunt that continues and continues. To find evidence against you. As another example, the sting that they did involving Gretchen Whitmer was fake. Just like those who instigated January 6th. It was a fake deal. Fake it was a fake deal. Okay, so January 6th was instigated by Antifa and BLM. Is that the direction he's going? The rest of his people, sure, they, I mean, they, they didn't want to do it. They were instigating. You have to understand, his followers are gullible assholes, and all it takes is somebody wearing the same clothes as them, telling them to commit a crime, and they will, because he says so. That's totally normal. It was a fake deal. It was such a fake deal. Gretchen Whitmer was in less danger than the people sitting in this room right now, it seems to me. Uh, I, I, on that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you should probably leave the room. And you look to see what happened and trials are going on all over the place. And I guess a lot of people too are being exonerated, aren't they? Huh? They're being exonerated. No, they aren't. Finally, every- Again, what is that? A, a lot of people are just being exonerated, like it's just happening. Where we have the chance, we must pass critical election integrity reforms, including universal voter ID. They don't want a voter ID. They don't want voter ID. Well, sure we do. We just want a national voter ID card that state officials can't take away from you. That proves your uh, right to vote and, and is free. Shouldn't cost you anything because that's a poll tax. There are no circumstances. It shouldn't cost you a cent to vote in a country where you have a right. 
unless you guys, you know, by the way, um, if you pass a law for universal ID, but you don't provide an ID, then you're saying that people have rights, but the government can um, can put a charge, a, you know, a fee on any of those rights to for their maintenance or whatever. So you can still have the Second Amendment. It's just going to cost you $20,000 a year. It's a small fee. I mean, if it's a dollar, it's a million. Who cares? I mean, it's all about the legal ability to do it. Talk about slippery slopes. We don't want voter ID. There's only one reason they don't want voter ID. Is because um, you guys change what the standard is for voter ID in all these different places. Plus, it costs money and you shouldn't have to pay for your own rights. Because they want to cheat. They don't want citizenship confirmation. We don't care if you're a citizen. We don't want, we want. Yeah, they want to take off that whole thing where you have to swear that the stuff that you say on your vote, on your registration paper is true. They want to remove all that. I mean, they don't, but of course they do. Everybody to come and have a, think of it, those two things. No more fake drop boxes. You see the drop boxes in one case, 100% of the vote went to Joe Biden, 100%. Yeah, because A, in that area, most of the voters like 90% were for Biden because of the neighborhood and your, his supporters didn't use drop boxes because he had told them to vote in person because that's the only legit way to vote. And you saw 2000. Why would any of Trump's voters use a drop box? He told them that the, the Democrats were going to steal their votes anyways. Why would they? Meals. I hope everybody said it. Oh, 2,000 mules. Uh, yeah, garbage. I covered it. It's terrible. and doesn't say anything it thinks it says. By the way, uh, Trump actually thinks that the backpack guy in that movie is not a reenactment. If you say that to him, he'll deny it. I saw a... I saw... that. I looked at this movie. Then I saw somebody being interviewed by Fox, unfortunately. Somebody named Sandra Smith. And they talked about this whole scam. Don't forget, the cameras have them. And these are government cameras. Some of them were discarded by people illegally. But these are government cameras. The government. The cameras were discarded? And they talked about it. Well, they saw it. They saw the stuffing. They saw everything. Looking up for the cameras, the way they came in. They have it perfectly on tape. And yeah, he means the guy with the backpack who they have multiple shots of him. And it's an actor it's he's he's credited in the in the in the end of the film they call him antifa guy or something she shit. looks and she goes oh that was debunked it wasn't debunked how did they de i uh yes it was i did it i debunked it other people have too but i really did i did the whole thing i did all of it i didn't just like share parts of it and go there's a problem with this and the whole thing is bullshit all of it it's garbage it's hilarious Bunk it mike they didn't debunk it yeah there was no debunk they didn't i did Bunking. It was debunked. What's debunked? They have it on camera. <laughs> well, the woman in Georgia that took the massive number of ballots from under the dress of the table, right? And now <laughs> government's apologizing to her. Oh, how could she have been so horribly treated? It's very interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting that once the facts come out, you can't threaten someone's life and get away with it. It's terrible. People would not even believe what's happening to our country. That one's a very interesting one because remember they said there was a water main break. No, they didn't. Wrong part of the building, wrong time of day. A water main break, everybody out. They don't talk about the real facts. Because, well, yeah, they do. They just don't talk about that because it's not a real fact. Everybody out. You gotta get out. They all run out. Then a couple of, a short time later, a small group comes back in. They go right for the table. They don't go back to the machine where they were, which would be a more normal. They go right for the table, the dress. They lift that dress up. They grab that group of ballots, thousands of them. It's just uh, like, honestly, this is just stupid. Like there are people sitting there now who like have watched that and believe it's fraud, but go like, you're getting the fraud wrong putting them in again and again.
And then they said nothing happened. Bill Barr didn't want to be impeached. He didn't want to be impeached. Oh, my God. We're, we're, we're going with Bill How Barr. How did you not get impeached? Nothing happened. I thought the election was fine. <laughs> the rather respected Bill McSwain, you know, the... the <laughs> They're booing Bill Barr. You hired him, asshole. The respected U.S. attorney from Pennsylvania, McSwain, called me, wanted my endorsement because he was running for governor. I said, I wouldn't endorse you for good dog catcher because you didn't. And I didn't like saying this because you didn't. I didn't like saying this because it pointed to the fact that I was, I had lost and I was completely fucked. Do what you should have done, which is go into the election for it. Sir, I wasn't allowed to. Why? Bill Barr wouldn't let me. I said, put it in writing. He did. He wrote me a letter. I put the letter up, but they don't want to print the letter. Now, these people in the back, the the people with the cameras don't want to print my letter. Very strong letter that Bill... Very strong. Bill Barr would not let him look into corruption fraud. In Philadelphia, one of the most dishonest... Black. ...election places in the country. In Detroit, the single most dishonest... Mm. They found nothing wrong. So sad. It's a shame. It's a shame and a shame. We want no shame, private money pouring into local election offices anymore. Think of this Zuckerberg. Yeah, Zuckerberg. That's what did it. He put in $417 million, Matt. $417 million. And Matt knows because he was involved in Nevada. Matt wasn't really, you know, he was sort of on the edge. He could have gone either way. And then he got involved in... Looking at Nevada, he said, this is the most corrupt thing I've ever seen. But we had a Democrat judge. He refused to even look at the case. The case was ironclad. He looked. This case is over. It's a shame what's happening to our country. It's just terrible. He looked at it. It was like magic and other. A shame. Also, by the way, uh, just, just for the record, um, this is from Bloomberg. Fetterman tries to weirdify Dr. Oz in Senate race and builds polling lead. The Tries Party successfully is weirdifying Dr. Oz. Although I have to say, Dr. Oz does a lot of that work himself. Game. Our goal should be. Safe. Oh, by the way, um, check out the other headlines under this. Buffett's Berkshire pounces on market slump to buy equities. Almost half of mortgage homes in the U.S. now considered equity rich. Meet the doomsayers. Five who say the U.S. economy will keep shr shrinking. This is the tail end of this. We got it. You can't have all good stories in here. Oh, look at that. Winners and losers and Democrats' signature tax and energy bill. That's Senate passes Democrats' landmark tax dr climate drug. There you go. Biden agenda clears chamber. Hold on one second. Move out of the way, you silly ad. There you go. Biden agenda clears chamber after night of marathon votes. GOP warns tax increase could uh, deepen looming recession. Of course, what the fuck do you think they're going to say? The Senate passed a landmark tax, climate, and health care bill, speeding a slimmed-down version of Joe Biden's domestic agenda on a path to becoming law a year after Democratic infighting in the White House was, uh, was unable to control. The vote on the bill uh, was 51 Democrats in favor of 50 Republicans against, with uh, Kamala Harris casting the tie-breaking vote after an overnight marathon of votes on amendment. It now goes to the House, where the Democratic majority is expected to pass it on Friday. Democrats call the bill the largest investment in fighting climate change ever made in the U.S., uh, by the way, after the rescue package and what was in the infrastructure bill combined, by the way, which were the two biggest things in one year, or the biggest thing in one year, which was two separate things, um, it's uh, projected to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 40% from 2005 levels by the end of the decade. They applauded and hugged during the vote on the final passage. Um, it's terrible what they're doing. Same day voting with only paper ballots. That should be our goal. That should be our goal, because if the disabled can vote, we don't have a country. Thanks, Gorilla. You missed. Only paper. You know, France just said, France, which is a pretty big country, just said 55 million people vote, all paper ballots, all same-day voting. By 10 o'clock in the evening, the election was over. They fill them out that way, but they get their machine counted, stupid. They just don't use screens and print out what their actual vote was. But it's the same thing. We we create a receipt. You can look at it. Is that how you voted? Yes, it is. 
That goes in an envelope. It's counted digitally. But if there's any question, they compare it to the original paper copy. What do you think, France? Did, uh, hold on. Uh, let me do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, they don't. They don't count them with machines. They just count them by hand. Right. So you're gonna go. Voters make the choices in a booth with the curtains closed, then place the ballots in an envelope that is put into a transparent ballot box. Uh, they must show photo identification and sign a document next to their name to complete the process. This is the French system. Volunteers count the ballots one by one. Officials then use state-run software to register and report results more efficiently. There you go. No machines. Oh, I. that's so funny how I, if I surround the stuff. But uh, Officials will then use state-run software to register and report results more efficiently. It's the same thing. It's exactly what I was saying. But legally only the paper counts. If a result is challenged, the paper ballots are recounted manually, which is exactly what we do. People who can't go to the polls for various reasons can authorize someone else to vote for them. They have proxy voting. You think the Republicans would be cool with that? To do so, a voter must fill out a form ahead of time and bring it to a police station. A person can be proxy for no more than one voter living in France and potentially one additional person living abroad. Up to 7% of people voted by proxy in the last presidential election five years ago. No mail-in voting, rare machine voting. Mail-in voting was banned in 75 amid fears of potential fraud because there were no computers. <laughs> Machine voting was allowed as an experiment starting in 2002, but the purchase of new machines has been frozen since 2008 due to security concerns. Only a few dozen towns will still still use them, but they do. Last year, Macron, Macron's centrist government tried to pass an amendment to allow early voting by machine to encourage electoral participation in the COVID-19 pandemic. The Senate, led by a conservative majority, rejected the measure, arguing it was uh, announced with too little notice and was not solid enough legally. There we go. Hold on. Um, let's see. France voter participation rates. See what they're like. Let's see. So, um, okay, this is um, first round, second round. Voter turnout in the president, okay, is, go is going down. Hold on. Let me do this in here if I can. Um, here's voter particip participation. The highest seems to be first and second round was in 1974. It tapered down till 2000. Then they introduced uh, electronic voting. It went back up. Then they put a moratorium on it here, and it started to go back down again. They have uh, currently about 70, what was this? Where we go? 73% first round and second round there. It's a pretty good turnout. About a quarter of the people, a little less, a little more rather, don't vote. And the person that lost didn't go around complaining. It's on to the next one. How would you know? You don't speak French. I'd much rather do that. I'd much rather do that because you can just print those ballots and nobody's the wiser. They keep counting over and over again. I'd much rather do that. But that would be the worst thing that could happen to our country. Because we have to have honest elections or we have to have borders or we don't have a country. I'd rather do that, but that would be the worst thing for our country. Uh. And if we do all this, if we stop the crime, secure the border, save the economy, defend our culture, we wouldn't have been the Trump administration. And take back our democracy. Then America first conservatives will be rewarded with a governing majority that will transform American politics forever. We're forever and ever. It's such an important point. So important. The radical left will be banished into political oblivion. <laughs> we will save our freedom. We will save our children and we will save our country. Mm -hmm. Why does he seem afraid of the teleprompter on the right? Is that what that says? But the ta Ribbit. task will not be easy. No. Together we are standing up against some of the most menacing forces. Yes, AOC, I'm terrified. Entrenched interests. Um...
Medicare recipients. And vicious opponents our people and our country has ever seen. And that, that meaning people who want to cap the price of insulin and repair our roads and bridges. It's terrible. A friend of mine recently said that I- Yeah, he doesn't have any friends. I was the most- Honest person ever because it, nobody could withstand this kind of love. Persecuted person in the history of our country. And I was like, what? But Abraham Lincoln, Kennedy, Garfield. I mean, the, the King George wanted to kill Washington and Jefferson and all that. But I, you're right, probably me. And then I thought about it. And I was like, you're right. Because I didn't have time to think much because I'm always being persecuted. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I felt. Ah, oh, that's just fucking embarrassing. You know, you know, I'm kind of an asshole. He may very well be right. What a terrible thing. We had, think of. Honestly, I, you, you guys think that like the people that are there are just like, you just gotta, you, they just gotta give them a, like an ideological mulligan on some stuff. Just like, I don't know. That a Russia, Russia, Russia scam. That was covered religiously by the fake news media. Even Boo, fake news media who are apparently here filming it and it's really only RSBN and local Dallas news. Or Even though there. they knew it was a fake. They knew it was fake. They knew earlier than anybody. <laughs> it turned out to be a concocted fairy tale made up by crooked Hillary Clinton, the Terrible. Democrats, a sleazeball writer named Christopher Steele, who had sex with Ivanka, allegedly. And a coordinated effort. This could only happen to me with, of all places, you know who coordinated? Russia! <laughs> they were the ones that were involved with the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax on me. Oh, okay, so uh, you are you now support Ukraine against them because you see that they're an enemy to democracy. By the way, uh, Russia wasn't supporting him. Russia just knew that he was one of the best ways to throw a monkey wrench into our democracy. They want a chaos agent, not a super spy. Then I had impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, the Mueller investigation resulting in a verdict after two years of no collusion Not true. with Russia. You know, during the very early part when I came down, the escalator with our great first lady, who by the way is very popular. Who's very popular with other people. I don't like her so much. She'll look great buried uh, near the 18th hole at Bedminster. Love our first lady. We love our first lady. Uh, that's not the look you get on your face when you're talking about how much you or other people love your wife slash girlfriend. Great style and great heart. I, I've heard people say that about it. But her. when I came down the escalator, it started early on. Young people would come up. You might have heard this story. I've told it a couple of Oh, yeah. Believe me, we've heard all this before. Times, not much. But young campaign were, sir, it's such an honor to meet you, sir. Oh, someday I want to be president. Sir, can I ask you one question? Yes. Do you have anything to do with Russia? I said, that's a strange question from this kid. This kid. Then a month later. How do these kids all know about Alpha Bank and how we only get our, are they reading? God damn it. Are they reading Don Jr.'s interview transcripts again? Somebody else would come up, sir, it's an honor to meet you. Sir, do you have sir, sir, sir. anything at all or any knowledge of anything that happened with you in Russia? No. And I was so innocent. You know, it was so crazy. Yeah, so nuts that even anybody would know about it because I thought we'd covered our track so well. That I didn't even take it seriously. Yeah. I was just like, once you're president, you could do anything you want. You're like a king. That's what I thought about Obama when he was in there. And of course, I found out that that wasn't the truth. Once I got in there, I was very disappointed. But after about the fifth time this happened, sir, do you have anything to do with Russia? I said, what the hell is going on with Russia? And they made up a phony story. It was a concocted story. It's terrible. They just made it up. I don't know. And it really started as a way oh, God. to shift blame for the fact that Hillary Clinton and the Democrats lost the election. But then it got carried away, and the press loved it, and it kept going and going. But it's almost like they kept 
finding stuff. Initially, it was about an election, and then they recognized that you were actually compromised. And then you had Sergey Lavrov and the other dude who's dead now in the White House laughing about our judicial system. I tell this story with a very heavy heart because I have a son who is a very good guy, Don. Very, very. Good. Yeah, the other sons, not so much. He's a good person. Sometimes he comes across a little rough, but you know what? He's really, he's just a good person. And think of this. Adam Shifty Schiff and these people, they made up this whole. Oh, this whole, like, his son deserves to be in jail or some shit. I don't know which reference he's making. Like, we've, does anybody know exactly what he's talking about with Adam Schiff saying that Don Jr. should be in jail? Like. They knew it was a hoax. And I saw him at the microphones one day saying, Donald Trump Jr., the son of the president of the United States, will soon be going to jail for what he did with Russia. Think of this. What? What? Yeah, I have no fucking idea what he's talking about. Like, this is just a, like... Uh, honest to God. I, I I wouldn't mind watching it if he's if I okay, hold on. Uh let's let's do a deep another deep dive. Let's see. Uh junior mm -hmm. uh, jail. Let's see what I can find out what I Um Let's see. Michael Cohen goes to jail. Let's see what this is. Why wouldn't Trump? Okay, no, that's... Maybe he just assumes... Um, what the hell is going on? Okay, Michael Cohen claims Trump told him Don Jr. should go... I mean, this might be what he's talking about because Schiff has talked to, about Michael Cohen's story that, uh, remember, because Michael Cohen said uh, that if anything goes down, Don Jr. should go to jail, not Ivanka. If one or the other has to go to prison, make sure it's Don because Don would be able to handle it. Ivanka won't. That was the Cohen clip. And I think Schiff might have been maybe quoting him. Yeah. He's saying that my son, my beautiful son, my child is going your adult son who's in in his 40s now to go to jail for criminal what well, you didn't say it actually and he knew it was a hoax wants to put my son destroy my son also technically isn't wouldn't this be a hoax that you're making up that he actually said this wouldn't that qualify in most people's minds Hmm. And he knew it was a hoax, and it continues to this day. These are evil people. These are sick people. Think of that. Right, right Matt? It, they're evil. You're fighting evil. Remember, you, defending me is fighting for good and angels in heaven and God. And anybody who comes for me, that makes them the devil automatically. It's evil. It, I, even when I commit crimes, they're for the good of... It doesn't matter. Kimberly. Right. Who has been through anything like this? Certainly no politician and definitely no president. Oh. Nixon. I mean, not to mention the ones that were assassinated. All of this while I was doing so much as president. And so good. Including creating the most secure border in American history. Record tax and regulation cuts. They just repeat the lie enough, I suppose. One dollar and eighty-seven cent gasoline, no inflation, low interest rates, record growth in real wages, record growth in our economy, beating China and Russia and everybody else, rebuilding our entire military. It's amazing how he, his own people didn't show up. We built our entire military. You know, our military was falling to pieces. Oh, fuck, man. You already said this part. We have 
jet fighters that were 44 years old. You've heard the story where the grand trainers the father flew him, then the father, then the son. The historic Abraham Accords bringing peace to the Middle East. <laughs> Jerusalem and Israel, much, much more. Much, much more. Yeah, it was a needle. And stick. now we have the January 6th unselect committee of political hacks and thugs like Schiff. <clears throat> Think of that, though. Think about that. How would you like to be a father and watch this guy? Not a stupid man. He's a psycho, but he's not as stupid. And he does have an oddly shaped head. It's shaped like a watermelon. Right? <coughs> no, he's a psycho. <coughs> and he acts like so sanctimonious. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to report Donald Jr. will be in jail for what he's done. And, they, and, and he knew it was a hoax. What they do to destroy lives and the also like, what the fuck are you saying? Where is that from? He says it all the fucking time. Destroying the lives of many other people, right? Yeah, but enough about Hunter Biden. Exactly, Diane. That same thing and that same sickness and thinking. But it's the very same people who perpetrated the lies that I was an agent of Russia. Me, I'm an agent. Uh, no, no, you are a chaos agent. You are not something they were, someone they were hoping would be effective. They just knew you would fuck things up. I'm the worst thing that ever happened to Putin. Look at what he's doing now. He's knocking the hell out of everyone because he has no respect. That would have never happened with me. He's knocking the hell out of everyone. He's, he's having his ass handed to him by a country one fifth its size. Would have never happened. It was an amazing thing. I had to listen to this, you know, with Russia. Yeah, I listen to old Russia. I put the biggest, I put the biggest charges on every one of their people. But what did I do? I stopped. I stopped. The biggest charges on every one of their people. Nord Stream 2. Nobody ever even heard the term Nord Stream. That was, I found out, but I stopped them. And I stopped them. Why did I stop them? Because I thought it was a terrible thing for our country. It was a terrible thing for Europe. I told that to Germany. They all smiled. Very famous now. Germany was smiling when I was at the United Nations saying gibberish. This is a terrible thing. All you have to do is look at the last 200 years. It's going to happen again. We could end. Well, then why didn't you predict this? What was if it was going to happen again, then why would your presidency make a fucking difference? End up in World War Three because we are being governed by incompetent people. Could happen. And this war will be worse than any war ever because we have weapons the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. But you say, where does it stop? Where yeah, where does it stop? Does it end? It probably doesn't stop. Okay. All right. Well, then let's call it. All right. I guess, uh, everybody, I'll meet you in the bunker. Because despite great outside dangers, our biggest threat remains the sick, sinister, and evil people from within our own country. We must turn on our fellow Americans if we are to survive. Never forget everything this corrupt establishment mm. is doing to me is all about preserving their power and control over the American people. As they do unto me, they do unto you. I am simply the martyr that represents the nails they wish to drive into your hands. Fuck off. People. They want to damage me in any form so that I can no longer represent the hardworking citizens of our country. Yeah, because uh, no Republicans or maggots are capable of anything that this guy's been able to do. You guys are just, they'll, you'll never top this dude ever in your whole fucking life. His accomplishments, his capability, his intellect, his obvious ability to blather for hours at a time, you're never going to be able to top that. If he, if he goes down, you go down. Sorry. It's the be he's the best you can do. Everything about him, like the grabbing women by the pussy stuff and the failed businesses and Trump stakes and Trump water and Trump fucking football and airlines, all of that. You can't do any better. None of you can. There is a big orange ceiling over every Republican in this country. I'm sorry to tell you. And once he's gone, you guys are just going to be stuck uh, in the, you know, in the political basement forever. Because you can't do better than this guy. He is, him and Ted Cruz are the two best people in the world. And you will never be able to surpass them in, in their ability to do things. Sorry.
so that I will no longer get a 99% approval rating from CPAC. I heard Matt. Look at him winking at Schlapp. I got a 99% approval rating. They bought it. Protested. He said it can't be. Eight. It came out at 98. This is a story. I don't know if it's true, but Matt will tell you someday. He protested. He said, that's ridiculous. It can't be. So they went back and they checked all the facts. And it went from 98 to 99. Is that a true story? And that was McLaughlin. You know, that's a great, legit firm. That was. Has, does McLaughlin do the straw poll at CPAC? What the fuck? Why would you need that? This is McLaughlin. He said, can't be that's too hard. It doesn't look right. Well, check it again. 99. But they don't like that. The other side doesn't like that much, man. And the fake news media is totally complicit in all of these things. That they won't even turn the cameras around and show the empty back part of the room that we're in. That are happening. If I renounced my beliefs, if I agreed to stay silent, if I stayed home, or if I stayed in my basement, <laughs> the persecution of Donald Trump would stop. Mm, no, it's because it's not persecution. You don't get to avoid a crime. Like, hey, your honor, I'll just keep my fucking mouth shut. Okay. Just forget about my crimes and I'll just stay in my giant rich house. Immediately. That's what they want me to do, but I can't do that. And I will not do that because I love our country and I love the people of our country so much. Notice he never says America. That's a thing. It's a, you know, why, why, why in this day and age, wouldn't you just, especially if you're a Republican, when you go, but I can't do that because I love America and, and I love my fellow Americans. You know what I mean? He always says our country. That's the, I mean, it's tribal bullshit, but it's really, it's so sh striking. Thank you. I'm not doing this for me. No, of course not. Because I had a very good and luxurious life. No. You know that, Carrie. I had a very luxurious life. What the hell did I do? Right. There you go, fuck up. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the world's biggest fuck ups. I, yeah. You know how you can tell? Because he's fucked up his entire life and becoming president turns out to be one of the worst decisions he could ever make. I got a racist attorney general in New York that's been after me for years. She campaigned on the fact, I will get Donald Trump. She has a it, yes, uh, Trump is a race in and of itself. She has a thing against orange. About me. I will get him. <laughs> terrible people. These are terrible people. I built a great company. Now they're finding out this was a great company. Yeah, is that what they're finding out? It's a great company. I mean, it, you know, for a mob organization. Great company. Actually better than they thought. No. Much better. No. But I do it for you. Again, like, knows that little, like, weird, humble brag, like, they're investigating me, but, you know, just to see how good I'm doing. And it's my honor to do it. It's my great honor to do it. It's so great. It's just, I mean, I might as well be Jesus. You're welcome. Because if I don't, our nation is doomed to become another Venezuela or become another Soviet Union, which is where we're headed. Yeah, totally. Or become a very large-scale version of Cuba. Yeah, I mean, that you can choose from one of those three. Or, a, or a, like a third, like a China, but with not as many Chinese people, but all the bad parts. Or kind of like... We're all is lost and there is no hope. Yes, that's right. We're all headed towards... All is lost and there is no hope in the next couple of years, probably faster. But no matter how big or powerful the corrupt radicals we are fighting against may be, no matter how menacing they appear. Yes, they're very spooky. We must never forget that this, never. this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. This well, I mean, it's it's like it's like he's uh, his own activist song. This land is our land. This land ain't their land. <laughs> this is your home. This is your heritage. This is your country that your American ancestors won with their own courage, defended with their own blood and blood and built 
with their own blood hands. From the jagged peaks. Oh my God. From the jagged peaks of someplace. Of the Rocky Mountains. Of the Rocky Mountains. To the gleaming waters of the Great Lakes. To the gleam of the Great Lakes. From the majestic valleys of California. From the valley like of California. Uh, totally. To the beautiful hill country of Texas. To the Texas hill country. Well, I'm proud to be an AmeriClam, where at least I'm Mo, I'm Cree. You, I said Texas. See, I told you, put Texas in the speech, they'll go nuts. From the stark prairies. From the stark prairies of Kansas. Of the Great Plains to the banks. Of the Rio Grande. To the banks in the Rio Grande, where I hide my money. The banks of the Rio Grande. Which is under siege also, isn't it? It's totally under siege. To the, to the under siege banks. And from the magnificent skyscrapers of New York and Chicago and L.A. To the beauty right here of the storied Alamo. The Alamo. <laughs> Woohoo! We inherit... Who wrote this? Uh, Stephen Miller. Inherit the legacy of generations of American patriots, American patriots who poured everything they had into a sock the nation that they into the diaper that they were wearing they loved they scaled the summits they forged the rivers they got bone spurs and didn't do any of that they crossed the their friends sweltering deserts brave blistering winters Conquered an unknown wilderness like Tulsa and settled the great frontier. They laid down the rail, which, of course, if a lot of people don't know this, is in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Railroads. They built out the highways. They built them out. They were originally there. They just widened them. And that was real infrastructure. They turned tiny villages towering into great magnificent buildings of iron. They, tiny villages towering. What? They built out the highways. Uh-huh, we got that part. And they turned tiny villages towering. Tower. Tiny villages towering. Ugh, fuck. Into great magnificent Tancy, buildings of iron and steel. With, just put the word towering in there somewhere. Like nobody had ever... Like no one has ever towered a towering before. Seen before. No one's ever seen it before. They did it all to make America into the greatest and most exceptional nation. It, the most exceptional. In the history of the world. It was like, it was... Mm, wait a minute, they did this? I thought I did this. Someone else made America great? Mm. What's that? What the fuck is that look? Mm. Dr. Scott Adams, what the fuck? Explain but to us. But now... But now it's terrible. We are a nation... We're a deep shit. In decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that is hurting very, very badly. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in over 40 years. And where the stock market just finished the worst first half of the year since 1872. Likewise, we are a nation that has... The yeah, in sheer fucking numbers, when the... Hold on. We, we have not had this bad a stock market. It lost 2,000 points. Which is the worst since it was, it only had 2,000 points. Oh my God, this is so stupid. The highest energy cost in its history. We are no longer energy independent or energy dominant. Yeah, we are. As we were just two short years ago. We're a nation that is begging Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, and many others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. 
And yet we have more liquid gold right on. See what he says? Please, please, please give us oil in the springtime. They said, now Biden boy, why don't you settle down? Cutter ain't your kind of town. There ain't no oil and there ain't no liquid gold like me. All right. Under our feet than any other country in the world. Well, no, Venezuela has more and obviously Russia has a bunch and there's a bunch of other countries. Iran has a bunch and like, he means if we, if we drill all in Alaska and it's just full of oil, like we know it is. We are a nation that is consumed by the radical left's Green New Deal. Yet everyone knows that the Green New Deal will lead to our destruction. We're a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving behind dead. Hang on. Fuck you. Our soldiers did not surrender in Afghanistan. You negotiated the exit. We had to extend it three months because you didn't do any of the fucking work. Soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest. This is a lie. Military equipment. That's a lie. In the world. Garbage, silly, ridiculous, stupid. I don't know why I keep saying it, except for it seems to work with certain people. Nonsense. And we are a nation that allowed Russia to devastate a country, Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of people. And it will only get worse. <laughs> you don't think it's going to get better quicker? You don't think they're going to suddenly... You don't. It, maybe if you called Putin personally, you know, make, tell him what's up. Say, you know, if you don't do what I'm telling you, I'm going to tell Biden to do something. And he, anybody tells him to do something, he just does it because he's an old man. He's doddering. He's a criminal mastermind, but he can't remember what day of the week it is. And if I tell him to do it, he'll blow you up. He'll blow you to smithereens. I'm just saying. It would never have happened with me as your commander in chief. And for four long years, Gibberish. it didn't. And China with Taiwan is next. Would also never have happened. Yes, we are this thing that hasn't happened yet would have never happened. And if it doesn't happen, it's because they know I wouldn't have let it happen. That has weaponized its law enforcement like never before against the opposing political party. No, this is like, woe is me. Also, the same asshole who wanted National Guard troops uh, patrolling American streets. We are a nation that no longer has a free press, no longer has a fair press. Fake news is all we get. Mm. And they are the enemy of the people. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed. Where crime is- Says the guy on camera with a mic in his fucking face in front of a crowd saying whatever the hell he wants. Rampant like never before. Where the economy has been collapsing. Yeah, it's totally collapsing. It's the worst it's ever been. We know it's a dep It's not even a recession. They say it's not a recession. I, I'm saying it's a re depression. That's why it's not a recession. At a rate that few have ever seen where more people died of COVID in 2021 than died in 2020. Because it was a whole year and most of them were your supporters. We're a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon, which they are incredibly big. Uh, this asshole backed out of the deal that was stopping them from doing it. Being allowed to do right now and I had it stopped. <laughs> And China, to use the trillions and trillions of dollars it has taken from us prior to our administration. And it's happening again. To build oh, so they just had a break. They built all this up. They had this big 50-year plan. And then they, while you were president, they put it on pause because they were afraid. A military that will more than rival our own. Nonsense. And just two years ago, we had Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea in check. So close. They weren't going to do a thing against us. Nothing. And everyone knows it. Do, do everyone, do they? They all know it? Ask Matt Schlapp when he's had a couple of drinks in him. And perhaps most importantly, we are a nation that is no longer respected or listened to around the world. Uh. We are a nation that in many ways has become a joke. We are a nation that is... No, no, no. This, this goes to our country and this is our country so that when people laugh at him, they're laughing at America. 
They're laughing at you, fuckhead. It's hostile to liberty, freedom, and faith. We are a nation that allows men to play sports. Yes, it's terrible. On women's teams. <laughs> On women's teams. I am woman, hear me play. And to dominate them. Well, that's... Some people are just into that. I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. We are a nation whose airports are a disaster. They're just, uh, yeah. Don't fly, whatever you do. Everyone's, if you're a maggot, stay home. Don't fly. Stay away from the airports. They're dangerous. Oh, what the fuck? Whose flights never leave on time. Never. Ugh. Isn't it frustrating? No wonder Chank Uger flipped out at the people behind the counter. Who could blame him? and whose passengers are stranded all over the country. <laughs> just, they're just, what the fuck are you talking about? Since when did our fucking airlines fail all of a sudden? We are in many ways a third world nation. No, we're not at fucking all. Can, tell me you've never been to a third world country or experienced even second world conditions in your life without actually telling me. We're a nation whose economy is floundering, whose supply chain. It's, our economy was floundering so much that there were too many passengers for too few planes. It's broken, whose stores are not stocked. The inventories are actually up. The stores are not stocked. I know I have a person who goes to the store for me and I tell them to buy things that don't exist and they come back empty handed. And, and that's how I know things are they're out. Just don't get me started on fish delights. Whose deliveries are not coming? And whose educational system? Yes, who, no one's been able to get an Amazon package. I don't even know what the color, what color box they use or what their envelopes look like to you ranked at the bottom of every single list. Every list in the whole world. Of course, when you were president, it didn't improve, but. But we are not going to let this continue. No, no, you seem to while you were in office. Two years ago, we had the greatest. Airports. In our na nation. Oh shit, I didn't realize he was allowing me to fill in the words stocked, whose deliveries are not coming, mm -mm. and whose educational system is ranked at the bottom of every single list. Mm -hmm. But we are not going to let this no, continue. we will not go quietly. Two years ago, we had the greatest in our nation. We had something that was so... We had the greatest, we had greatest things. We had, fill in the blank yourself. Incredible. We had the greatest people in our nation fighting like they've never fought before. To fight. Yes, that's right. Uh, on ventilators, actually. They had spirit. They did spirit. A touch of daring do about 1130. They had hope. They did. No one has. They had hope. In the middle of COVID. That's what they had more than anything else. Fuck. I hope this cough isn't COVID. But we will soon have that greatness again. Yeah. Not right now, obviously. We will soon have that greatness. We will. We will. I mean, it's, I mean, look around. This place is a fucking dump. CPAC used to be great. And now I don't even know how you guys drove here. America's comeback begins this November. And, it and, and obviously without me. We'll continue onward with the unstoppable momentum that we're going to develop. Yeah, eventually. It's an unstoppable momentum. It hasn't started yet, but we're so working on uh, a unstoppable <laughs> momentum. On November 2024, because that's going to be, that's the big one. That's the biggie doo doo doo. Not this bullshit midterm stuff. I feel like I'm wasting my time. We are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. We're Stark Alley's almost done. We're all, we uh, literally, he's about to start the music and start jerking these people off on his chin again. We're going to keep on winning and we are going to get our keep on rolling, keep on rolling country. Sorry, sometimes you just have to REO Speedwagon. You just have to. Be back. 
Hold on one second. We like. I don't know that I can. Um, um, yeah. There you go. As soon as you are able. Sorry. As long as we can not lose our spirit. Don't lose your spirit. Oh, thanks. I, I was a uh, big REO Speedwagon fan as a kid. Uh, little known fact, my first girlfriend, Lois and I, our song was uh, I Can't Fight This Feeling Anymore. We danced to it at Cotillion. I mean, it was more like my song for her than it was her song for me. But I mean, she was a foot taller than me. What do you want? And I can't fight this feeling anymore. I've forgotten what I've started fighting for. Our movement will never be defeated. This is the greatest this movement. Mega. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. Mm, I'm going to go with the civil rights movement. I'm going to also get the abolitionist movement, which led to a civil war that ended slavery. I'm going to go with that also good. Also, the revolutionary movement that actually led to us having the Declaration of Independence, kind of important in the Constitution. Also, uh, I got to say, the buildup towards World War II, especially, you know, everybody pulling their own, that was pretty good. I'm, you suck. Gas yeah, suffrage? Yeah, that I, that works for me, right? Greatest in the history of our country. So great, you guys. I want you to know, you are the best. There's never been anything like it. Pro no. Probably you could say it's the greatest or one of the greatest in the history of the world. Mm, no. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even remotely float that. And it's interesting because sometimes I'll make a comment and I'll be challenged so strongly by the fake news. And some of them are just so ridiculous, people don't even feel the need to respond. But they never even challenged me on that. I've never... They just, they just turn their head and laugh into their knuckle. It's the weirdest thing. I've been challenged. I look at them right now. A lot of, a lot of viewers watching. Mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, I'm doing okay. They've never challenged me. It's the greatest movement in the history of our country by far. By far. And it will only get stronger with- So gonna get stronger because of you. Aachen, Reichen, Aachen, Reichen. With each passing day. And with- It's passing day, by the way. The help of all of you here tonight and the millions of patriots all across our land, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America We will make America We will make America We will make America Sorry, just to, like the idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. So God bless you all. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Clap, clap, clap. They're going to cut it off right away. Thank you. You guys are so awesome. Oh, no. Yay. So good. I was so awesome. Wasn't I awesome? I was so awesome. I was just like awesome. Thank you, everybody. Clap, 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 clap. Right on my cheek. Thanks. Okay, that's good. Clap. Squeak, squeak, squirk, squirt. Double hand job on my chin and my shirt collar. Thank you. You could squirt right in my hair. Thank you. The only thing that holds it up. Okay, guys. Great. Squirt, squirt. Thank you. That squirt's for you. For you. Also, okay. Yeah, squirt, squirt right on my uh, tie. And then, uh, hey. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Squirt, squirt. Okay, bye. Uh, thank you. Hey, all right. Thank you. Clap, 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 clap. Where's that swimmer chick? Squirt, squirt. Don't forget, you can always... Glad to give you a hand job for America. Thank you. Squirt, squirt. Okay, not so much.
I'll just stand right here. Like, like I'm a, in a swimsuit competition. Thank, clap, 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 clap. Thank you. Thank you. Right all over my face. There you go. Oh, boy, it's clearing out fast. They were really waiting for that opportunity. That's a bit sad. <laughs> well, we got it. We did it. We Whoops. We made it through. Sorry. We made it all the way through, people. Christ almighty. Um, so... Uh, tomorrow morning for the uh, morning show, Bob Seska is going to be my guest in the second hour. Um, and I've got to remember to send him the link to get us in there. Bob, it's coming your way. Um, and um, <laughs> Red Shyster Cult. As soon as you are able, and I am willing to make the break that we are on the brink of. Uh, thanks for, uh, but yes, glad uh, we finally got through one of these. I mean, the, uh, the other speech was fucking identical. Um, so, um, just like, it's not going anywhere. Like th this whole, the idea, look at this crowd. Look at these folks. They just couldn't wait to get out of there as soon as it was done, but they couldn't leave because of the social pressure of the psychos around them. But they're not interested. It's a fucking waste of time. They just zipped out as soon as it was done. Like, ah, fuck this dude. Foop. That is not, you know, we, on on uh, the Democratic side, we don't have a cult of personality. You know, sometimes it, you know, around Obama, maybe Clinton, there was a bit of that kind of stuff. But for the most part, maybe Kennedy, we don't, you know, we don't really build those kind of things because it's not how we roll. It's definitely how they roll. And once it falters, it falls. Because we can, we, you know... We can have unpopular leaders in our party that become popular and we can have, you know, popular ones that become unpopular pretty easily because we're not afraid of criticism and we're also, you know, in fairness, pretty good about praise when we get around to it. People are a little light with it with Biden, I personally think, but that's my opinion. You don't necessarily have to shave, share it with, and that's your shave. You don't have to share it with me simply because uh, we're Democrats. I don't care. That's the whole point of having your own opinion. I'm not, I don't have my opinion because of social pressure from the outside. And I don't have my opinion because I just want something to contrast with people I don't like. I have it because it's my feelings. It's my belief system. Whereas these guys, um, if you look, um, it's, this is a lot of cult behavior. And once a cult breaks apart, everybody flips over. It's like, a, it's like addictive personalities. You know, they, you know, they, they switch to, they switch from the loving, the addiction to loving it to the addiction to hating it. It's pretty scary. Revolutionaries and, you know, communists over the days, the Mao generation, uh, the Leninists, um, and in a lot of ways, uh, the, like, even the hippies to some degree, there was like this flip. Once they decided they weren't going that way anymore, it's, they're against it. Like the, the boomer generation, like free love hippies became the yuppies, became the gimmies. And that's not surprising, you know, because it, it's about extremity of thought as opposed to measuring your thoughts based on the reality and sticking to your ethics and your moral beliefs and going, what is the best expression of those things as opposed to, you know, a capital D or a capital R. Um, in this current system, the capital D is really the only avenue by which any of my ethical concerns are actually playing out in the world as opposed to some sort of cultish unicorn farting glitter fantasy version of the, you know, some possibility that some people had. Whereas with Republicans, they don't really care whether or not it plays out. Trump is the representation of those ideas in human form. And if he ceases, those things cease and nobody else can do it on his behalf. So anyways, yeah, it's their, <laughs> it's their star bellied sneak, sneakages. What is that? Templeton? I missed that one. Sneakages. It's fun. Um, Uh, mostly white boomers. You're not mostly dad gamble and not at all, actually. Worldwide. I'm Gen X as well. Yes, go dark, Brandon. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Les, thank you so much. Thank, uh, thanks for the super chat, you guys, tonight. Thanks for hanging out. I know this is a surprise when I will see you guys in the morning show. I'm going to let you guys go and get out of here because it's an extra thing and it's Sunday night. Go uh, sneeches. Yes. Um, 
Uh, be well, take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And remember when you're ever confronted with a choice that you believe is the lesser of two evils, choose less evil. And I now have a shirt that says that. You can buy it's in the store. It's probably below me. Below me. Okay, bye. <laughs> Good lord. Thank you.